And that was the intro. Welcome, welcome guys again to another episode of the Cloudy Days Calm Nights podcast. We've got my boy Matt Sinister, my girl P- Chaos Pixie, Chaos Kixie. Yeah, almost screwed that one up real good. Chaos, okay, <laughs> Chaos Pixie, I thought you said Chaos Ixie or something like that. <laughs> it's a verbal dangle clack right there. Verbal right? dangle clack. And of course you guys heard him yourself, the man Grim Green. How are you, bud? I am doing well, man. How are awesome. you? I am on cloud nine. I am. Yeah. Just things have been going so well. Yeah. Good. Well, I mean, all things considered, things have been going pretty well. Yeah. Guess. All things considered. <laughs> Here in this in this household uh, at the yes. current moment in time. Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we usually kick things off with a little bit of our buffets. Uh, why don't you go ahead and start off with us? I've got... Uh, I've right now honestly in front of me i've got the two retro vapes from the vlog last week that plume veil one 2.5 and the old jabo indestructible because they're vaping really great <laughs> <laughs> and it feels like all retro we vaping an old like 2015 atomizer again on like a really cool did you miss the plume veil stab wood and the plume veil is great i don't remember enjoying the plume veil 2.5 this much like when it originally came out I'm glad. I like giving old products another shot and just like, oh, I'll vape you for another few more weeks. You're really that's good. Awesome. Uh, yeah. so that's kind of it. And I got pods, you know, the Weenax, the Voo-Through. The Voo-Through. The Voo-Through. <laughs> yeah, the Voo-Poo-Through. <laughs> Voo-Poo-and-Through. through Oh, man. So, Matt Sinister, what are you up with then tonight? Oh, you know, I'm uh, number one, I'm insanely sore from training like a madman of six days this this past week Oof, in the gym monster monster yeah got that soreness yeah you know that achiness woke up this morning moved my arm went oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my lord <laughs> i didn't know that i had that yeah um so starting off with uh, my buffet uh got the uh odin dna 250 with the uh tm24 the Eclipse Cap, Breeze Tone 28s on the inside, with some of that baked banana nice. cream beauty. Oh, so good. I am really enjoying. But funny enough, and I'm also uh, got the uh, Vert, or not the Vert, I'm sorry, uh, the Clutch with the Turk V2, uh, Breeze Tones 26s on the inside, with some Ule Bolu. Yeah. So oh, I'm kind of going back and nice. forth. And I've also been like adding, man. yeah, banana man, and adding. I've uh, been trying uh, PV party, mixing it in with the different oh, nice. uh, banana flavors to see. Uh, I'm really, you know, I, I'm really having a, a hard time deciding which one I like better. <laughs> yeah, well, it, may, it might be one of those things you don't even ever have to decide. Yeah, you just like them both. Oh yeah, absolutely, and yeah. Uh, and then I always keep a sub on tank with me. You know, if I'm on, you know. If I'm going to go somewhere, you know, I don't bother bringing drippers or if I'm, I'm going to be in the yeah. car all day. And uh, sometimes you run into a problem with uh, RTAs in the middle of your drive, and then you're, what are you going to do? You know? Yep, that's it. Um, so I got the uh, Vapor SO Gen with the Cerebrus tank on top. And inside I have Rocket Blast. Oh, nice. You know, that is my all time favorite e liquid. Dude, Rocket, Rocket Blast. Blast was a banger. You know, I already, uh, I've already had a, a conversation with Wayne, right? Uh, and About said, "Look, it. Uh, I go, dude, I'm ninety percent of my vape, of my uh, e-liquids are yours, brother. So yeah. <laughs> what are we yeah. doing?" And uh, yeah, he's he's being really cool about it. Good. Um, Knew he would be. But yeah, that's uh, that and uh, my uh, coldest water bottle. Hell yeah! Oh yeah! Always have this freshly filled with the new go. Steel Valley sticker on there too. Oh, yeah, it's got uh, love that the new Steel Valley yeah, paper sticker on sticker. it. Got yeah, Ashton, Ashton Palmer. Palmer. Ashton Palmer. And then such a that sticker right there, Matt Effin Sinister. Sinister. Sinister, along with a coil turret sticker. I'm just I just got to get that uh, banana pack of uh, your stickers, Nick. And, I know. Uh, I got to order that. I'll send you one as a thank you for having me be a guest on your on your show. Okay, on your start, I appreciate that. Show here. Oh, yeah. I appreciate that. Of course, man. So I guess that leaves you, Pixie. What are you up with? 
Well, it doesn't leave you, but you're not. <coughs> you had to ask, like, the second I'm panicking and trying to find the name of the other thing that I'm running on. Um, <laughs> I think it says... No, it doesn't say it on it. Oh. It says it nowhere on it, oh. which bothers me now. Oh, there's a name on it. It looked like that was um, the name. <laughs> what so, is this? It does not say. So I've got the Dreamer and Mini Asgard combo because... Because... Like that's it. Like Super I have purple. like that's maybe it. four other mods, and I don't really touch any them. of them. <laughs> I mean, I switch off every now and then, but very rarely because if this is convenient to just sit beside my bed, throw a battery in, and go. Yeah. Um, and then I picked up one of the. I've been doing the disposables for work, just because they're small and easy and compact, and I have tried pretty much all of them and hide is usually not my favorite but the one i just picked up is like the cutest little thing and like the podcast users can't see it but like it looks like a little mini Dang. stick vape and it's actually got the liquid at the top so you can see where the level of the liquid is in your disposable oh that's a trip it's just a disposable yeah, yeah. it's a disposable oh shit Oh. And it was only, I think, 15 bucks. It's 2,500 puffs or something like that. Like, it's one of those, like, three to five day disposables yeah. for me. Such a long way. It has. Okay, well, that uh, that leaves me then. First up, I've got the uh, Unicorn Vapes Incorporated Vert with the MTurk V2. Nice and silver and black on that one. We've got... Of course, the Beast from the East Big Green 4S LiPo DNA 250C with the Steam Crave Aroma Miser Titan RDTA on there. And in that, I've actually got Strawberry Cheesecake from my man, Mr. Tom, who makes also the next stuff I'm vaping inside of the Saga with the uh, Ardent on top of that. In there, I've got some of my man Tom's Pineapple Upside Down Cake. Oh, which man. really I like good that stuff. Mod. I like that mod you just held up. The Saga? Yeah, that's, yeah I like that. I it's a pretty I banging little series mod. Before. Is it a series like 21700? Yep. Rad. Oh, yeah. Yeah, series. It's a yeah. lot. That's it is a lot. Brutal. <laughs> a lot. <man. laughs> that's a lot. I didn't even say what I was vaping on in the Turk V2, and that I've got some Vaptasia Killer Custard. 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 And Lando, man, oh man, Lando. He has changed his tune when it That's comes hilarious. to... That's hilarious. Have you heard about that, Nick? Have you seen no. that? No. Does he suddenly like custard now? <gasps> he is now... We got him to try uh, um, Bottle Violence Toffee Custard. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's a good one. It was... The, 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 the gimmick was that uh, if he got up to 400 subscribers on uh, Instagram. Instagram, that he would do it. Mm. And he did it on the green room. And he was like, he's vaping it. And he's like... I hate to admit that I was wrong, you know. <laughs> and now all of a sudden he's got he, now he just got the vanilla custard, and now he's like he's oh, turned into so the custard great. king. Wow, that's so great! Oh yeah, oh yeah. Now he <laughs> loves it. He can't get off of it. He can't get that's enough so of it. So funny. Now. He's probably kicking himself for ignoring custard for so many years. Of yeah. all the times to start ignoring it, yeah. Oh, I know. <laughs> to, to start getting into it, you know, it's like the custard. Damn. Oh man. So yeah, this is just a show where we go on about pretty much anything and everything, wherever the uh, yeah, cool. wherever the show takes us really is where it goes. I just kind of point us in a certain direction and then the conversation flows from wherever. Cool. Um, I did have three things I wanted to point uh, make points of to talk to you about today though. You and I discussed on, a, the last time I had you on was on my other show, way back when. And um, I know we went through like your history as a vapor. But today I wanted to do it a little differently, and I wanted to focus on the YouTube aspect of it. And okay. f see, you went through this before. What was your, what's your history with YouTube? How did you become into it? It just, uh, you know, I started it. It's really bizarre, and it felt really bizarre as an experience to go through it. But back in 2009, YouTube wasn't like, a career thing there weren't mm. people doing it all the time right it was just like this weird resource where you could sometimes like oh watch this funny video of a monkey or 
oh, it's like some passive entertainment, or sometimes there was like how-to videos and things like this. I would watch iPhone uh, case reviewers who would like review iPhone cases and stuff. And I was like, oh, this guy, he's reviewing iPhone cases. That's fun. And he just does it like in his living room or whatever. And so when I started vaping, there was nothing on YouTube. There was like 12 videos on YouTube that had to do with vaping and I'd watched them all a hundred times. And there was Scott doing it and this other dude, Leaford, who just, he only did a few videos before he went away. And so I thought I'll make some vape videos. And so I just started making vape videos and that's it. And I was just doing it <laughs> for fun. Like I would still, I was still working a full-time job and I, ha I was like, you know, doing, having fun working at Starbucks and I was living with my brother and I'm like, I got this cool vape hobby and I'm having a lot of fun with it. And it was just cool. And I just kept doing it. And someone posted a bunch of my videos to ECF one day and that got me a bunch of subscribers and I discovered ECF and like people had been posting my videos there and I didn't really like, wow. know about it. And so I started like interacting there way more. And like, I discovered this whole really cool community of people and like, people in these forums would have questions and I would try to like figure out the answers. And if I could figure out the answer, I'd like do a video about it. Like, does this cart fit in here? Here's a video about it. You know, this guy had a question. So I felt like it was a way that to, to get information out quicker. That's awesome. And, and I just started doing it. And now it's like people, it's their job. And like, they think about, seo scores and branding and marketing and things like that and yeah. i'm doing it the exact same way i did it in 2009 i'm literally just in my office with a camera and i don't think about branding and seo and like <laughs> just having a good time with it yeah dude i just do it absolutely you no know? well that would be work then if you start That's worrying right. about that that should yeah you know, mm -hmm. well you just... know and sometimes when i do it it really throws me off my game there was a couple you know there i go through times where it sometimes worries me like I'll think about it and I, you know whenever I focus on the dumb shit that's when I notice that I get off my game you know so mm -hmm. I have to remember what it's like you know what it was like back in 2009 just to be stoked and have fun and get a new vape thing and be stoked and shoot a video and like want to get that information out there rather than worrying about like Oh, when you search this video, my video is the twentieth one down instead of in the top five or something like this. It's stupid. It's stupid shit like that. Right. But like, you know, it's like how do I too bump my spots focus. up? Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, and it's dumb. Anyway. Yeah. So, given well, that was it. you've that was been doing this so weird. for so long now, how many years? Yeah, like, now? Uh, it's been. 12 years vaping yeah 12 years 12 years and some change vaping and a little bit under 12 years on youtube dang i mean no a little bit over 12 years on youtube now it's so wow. crazy we started in 09 right oh nine yeah yeah so, so yeah I mean, that's crazy what? Yeah, it, it gets crazy when you think about like how time has passed I when know. you started something like i think like that sticker i showed you on that bottle was made 21 years ago <laughs> yeah I, yeah it's weird when you get to this point in your life when you have those stories i was talking to my brother about this we were talking about like a trip to vegas we took and my brother says oh yeah that was uh 19 years ago i'm like what wait we have stories now where we say 19 years ago like that's a normal thing yeah all right well i have where i say you know when i was your age uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Back in my age. day. Yeah. Back in my day. It's you know, inevitable. To... You just get older. That's it. Back it in is. my day. <laughs> but it also it also puts it in perspective when you see how things have changed and how things you know it's like we can't exist without our phones anymore. Yeah. And back in the day You didn't care. I used to you didn't care. You didn't need a phone. You didn't you know. I, I was actually late in the game with cell phones. I didn't get a cell phone until 2003. Oh, see, that's, I might, I think I got a cell phone in 2001. I think I waited yeah. until 2001 or 2002 to get a cell phone. Don't and it was only, mind. it was only because my, I got a flat tire and I had to walk back to my house, uh, call AAA and then walk back. Cause it was about two miles, Ooh, you know, yeah. and, uh, 
after that, I was like, you know what? I need to get my first cell phone I got was just one of those free giveaway ones, <laughs> you know. Yeah. You're like, I just need this to make calls I, when I need it to. Yes. <laughs> and then, it. then then you upgrade to the flip phone, <laughs> then you upgrade to the Blackberry, and then you yeah. upgrade to the smartphone. <laughs> yeah, before you know it, you're an Instagram influencer. Just mm -hmm. just gets carried away. <clears throat> you see, I coming. completely bypassed the whole pager scene. I well yeah. we didn't have Oh papers. I had that. I had that too. I had a pager. That was probably the first thing I had. And I'd get a page and I'd pull over and go to a well, uh Pay phone and uh, yeah. everybody had one, just not pagers. me and my family. We were like, no, we don't need pagers, no need for those. Pagers. I just did the math. I got my first phone in 2001 when I was like 14 or 15 years old, and they were the old brick oh, style geez. Nextels because my mom worked for an excavating <laughs> company. Yeah. Yep. The boop, boop. And she <laughs> she wanted me to have a way to communicate with her, so her boss Gosh, gave her sounds... like one of the the bright yellow brick ones. And was like, here you go, she can have this and just keep it on the company policy. Just like give me like ten bucks a month or whatever it was at the time to add a phone to a massive like company plan. And I still so to this day <laughs> to this day I still have the same phone number I did as a teenager. I refused to move phone services oh, from one nice. to the other unless I could bring that number with me. Yep. That's good. That's bragging. I've nice. had about ten different phone numbers because you know when you're uh, when you work in the uh, uh, wrestling business and somebody somehow gets a hold of your cell phone number, oh yeah, uh, it just blows up. And then after that, it became, you know what? I don't need these uh, bill collectors to have this number anymore. Let me uh, switch numbers <laughs> yeah. and uh, swap my number real quick. Absolutely. You know, uh, it's uh, it, the, the progression of it. I mean, I remember my dad's car had a car phone. Oh, a uh, car in the, phone in the '90s. Yeah, yeah had a oh car phone God. and had a uh, a uh, wireless uh, 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 microphone. Well, not wireless, but it was you know it wasn't something you had to hook up to your head. It was like sure. connected to the uh, uh, visor. And I used to drive. I used to like take my dad's car for a drive when I was 16, 17 years old, and <laughs> calling my friends. Hey, what's up? I'm up for a drive. You know. You know, yeah. <laughs> calling you from a car phone, man. Or Stephen Wright. Stephen Wright had a great joke where he said, uh, "A friend of mine has a car phone. He has an answering machine on his car phone. And the message says, Hi, 'Hi, I'm home now.' <laughs> but if you leave, your, but if you leave your name and number, I'll get back to you when I'm out. <laughs> I'll get back to you when I'm out. Yeah. Well, that's like watching old Seinfeld episodes where they have. It's like old technology. Jerry Seinfeld has a car phone, and the guy steals his car, so he calls the car phone, and the thief answers it. It's <laughs> like that situation could only have existed in those few years when car phones were like the, the rage, jam, you know? Yeah, yeah like the I'm newest tech. <laughs> I'm trying to remember the movie, but it was uh, these. I think Charlie it was Charlie Sheen was in it, and uh, these guys steal a steal a Mercedes, and the the car phone rings, and they answer it, and they'll no, Tom isn't here right now. <laughs> Who's this? This is the guy stealing Tom's car. But, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. And that joke's only funny when car phones are a thing. Kids today, yeah. or even like, there's probably 20 somethings now, like maybe 30 somethings now that would watch that and go, car phones? What the hell's a car phone? What the hell is a car phone? phone? Car phone? <laughs> are you oh. supposed to be. Tech, te texting while driving on your car phone? On your texting car phone. on your car phone? Uh, yeah. What are you, yeah. <laughs> I got so upset the other night. We had friends over and I stopped at the the store to grab a, a six pack of cider for Lethal. And I held up my ID, like expecting the guy to check it. And he literally like, took a half second glance and walked away to do the transaction. And I was like, is that all you needed? He's like, yeah, I saw the one at the beginning of it. I know you're over 21. I'm like, oh, no. Yeah, wow. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah. When I worked as a bouncer, I would have, like, you know, people in their 50s get mad at me because I didn't card them. Really? I'm like, dude, why we, Why do you need me to card you? Well, I just think it's appropriate. I go, you're 50 years old. Yeah. Enjoy it. Live with it. <laughs> yeah. Been good for a while. I don't right? get carded yeah. when I have to buy alcohol anymore at all. I think that's I, just the facial hairs. I didn't get carded on my 21st birthday. I went to the store, the grocery store, on my 21st birthday with my ID in hand, and the, the guy never carded me. Yeah. 
That's happened. So, so one time, there was one time I took a trip to Vegas with my brother, and I was 24, and he was uh, 21, and I realized that w when we're driving home that my ID was expired the entire time, <gasps> but nobody ever asked for it. Holy cow. And it was just well, expired the whole time. Holy cow. Like three days in Las Vegas. <laughs> Thank goodness. Like, man, okay. Expired license. Right on. Locked out home. there. <laughs> yeah, well, I lived in Ve I lived in Vegas for a year, and then I, I probably still have the, the, the driver's license somewhere. But then when I would go back, even if it was expired, I would show it for a, for a local discount. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. You get that local discount. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you're, you're local here? Yeah, you get in for free. Hmm. Nice. Oh, there you go. <laughs> That's a nice little Matt. I've never been off the East Coast. That's <laughs> something I've never done. Oh, you got to get you off the East Coast sometime. I know. Hey, I you come to. out here where it's warm. Yeah. Uh, California. Yes, Massachusetts is certainly not warm right now. That's for sure. Uh, we got, what, 43 degrees out and rainy? Mm -mm. Yeah. No. Just seems. But you get summers there. Oh, yeah, we do. We get nice summers. Because I've been in I've been in the East Coast like in New York City in the summer when it's like punishingly humid oh. and hot and just yeah even the summers are bad it's like the summers are bad and the winters are bad upwards there. of ninety eight degrees plus one hundred percent humidity yeah yeah no. it's crazy <laughs> no oh but it gets to like one hundred and fifteen degrees out here so yeah, <laughs> yeah but still, oh but that's a dry hot. heat <laughs> but it's California. not everywhere it's so cool. not everywhere is it it's dry where I'm at no. <laughs> You know, how dry is it out in uh, the valley? Uh, Nick? I mean, uh, it, uh, it's it's fairly dry, but it actually maintains a nice little bit of humidity in the valley. It gets, mm -hmm. I mean, it gets really dry, not dry enough to like ir irritate my bad skin or anything like that. But uh, it gets pretty dry. It's nice. It's a really comfortable. Like go outside right now, eighty degrees feels awesome. If my pool yeah. was any warmer, I'd be swimming right now instead of talking to you guys. Mm. <laughs> I mean, you might have to bring me in a water sample. I'll have to analyze it yeah. for you with <laughs> all over my new job. See, I can do yeah. dry heat. Dry heat's yeah. fine. It could be 80 or 90. I can breathe. If I sweat, it actually evaporates. I can't do when the humidity hits the point where, like, if you're out doing something and you get sweaty, the sweat has nowhere to go. And you, you just feel like a wet, sticky mess. Yeah, yep. wrong. Stay out of Florida then, because yeah, Florida, was... Florida. <laughs> Florida, Florida should have a sign at the airport that says "No chaps get required." Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah exactly. <laughs> it's just well, I mean, oh. but in Florida, you still got flavored vape, flavored vaping, still legal, and they yeah, got vape true. shops out the yeah. wazoo. It's like Florida's kind of a vapor's paradise right now. Yeah, yeah why don't well, we? Um, why don't we talk about some of that stuff that's going on right now? Uh, what can you? offer people in the, the way of news at the moment um, the biggest news that you could offer them uh, the biggest news uh, I don't know that there's the biggest news There uh, there's a company called Vape Freight that was started by uh, Smoking Vapor the people that make uh, Me Pod, I believe okay. and so they started a B2B nationwide B2B shipping chain um, covering like all 50 states it's kind of wow. crazy the infrastructure that they already have. They've been working in logistics for a really long time, so they kind of had the groundwork already going on this. Um, and when it came time, they just kind of rolled it out. And then they announced, uh, I think it was a two a week ago or so, that they're working on a, a business to consumer solution as well oh. that would be available. It's still the Pact Act <coughs> still is required if you're shipping through them, but. Right. It's another. It's a shipping company that will possibly ship business to consumer, which is good. Um, and what some vape companies have been doing is releasing um, coverage maps. So Flawless Vape Shop in California just released their coverage map, and it's like the United States and all the states that are green they can ship to. Oh, cool! And all the states that are gray they can't yet. Yeah, yeah. Right. They're looking. They're trying to get compliance in that state because it's different for each individual state under the Pact Act. You have to. Oh. It's different. Uh, it's different requirements for each state. So if you ship to California, it's this set of paperwork and this set of information and this set of taxes, and it goes. Right. These emails go to these people. But if you ship to Massachusetts, it's a Completely different set different. of paperwork and a different set of taxes that go to different people. So it's. Right. It's meant to be prohibitive. You know, it's meant to be a pain in the ass. Absolutely. 
there's still a bunch of vape companies that are kind of powering through and but they still that. have to abide by like uh, but, local yeah, and state le- reg- yep. yeah, yeah, local regulation. state regulations so if you know it would be uh, I don't flavor know if there's still a, in place and right stuff. flavor bans still in place I don't think there's in any individual states that have banned like importing into the state Utah tried to do it for a while but I don't think any state has done that yet okay so I mean, there's some good news, and other there's big companies like Element Vape uh, and Eight Vape have mm-hmm. have said that they're continuing to ship. Oh, cool! You know, they have their own coverage maps. It's like we're getting to 70% of states. We're getting to 65% of states right now. Okay, cool. And there is oh. this, still that one weird loophole thing of personal packages are still allowed. Mm-hmm. And that's what I <clears throat> yeah been well, a big fan I, of. I, let me ask you this, Nick. Interesting. Uh, don't you think that Amazon should may try to jump on this to start selling vape stuff because they have their own distributor? Uh, so yeah, they, they could do. make a I lot mean, they of money. Have their own. They could. They could. I, it doesn't seem like something. I don't know. I mean, they could. They definitely could. I don't know if it's like really realistic or reasonable, especially considering that Congress, all they had to do is pass this and UPS had to stop. And then just to fall in line, UPS and DHL. Mm-hmm. like followed suit and FedEx followed suit. So oh. it's like for Amazon to turn around and go, we'll do it. I mean, that would be incredible, but I mean, it seems a little bit unlikely. It, it yeah. seems far-fetched. You know, yeah, I got you. It is far-fetched. I mean, what's not far-fetched though really is see, there's still going to be brick and mortar shops, you know, in States where there can be, there still will be. Mm-hmm. And there is the possibility there for like a, DoorDash type of voluntary delivery app-based ordering service. It'd be really easy to set in place, especially since it's based on volunteers. Someone would sign up and go, I'll be a vape delivery guy. Absolutely. They get an order from the customer. They go to the vape shop. They fill it, and they deliver it just like they do with dispensaries and alcohol and everything Mm. else in California. Quicknick. And there is kind of an opening for that. They could call it Quicknick instead of DoorDash. Quick neck. <laughs> this is billion. This is a million dollar business idea right here. Million dollar idea. Quick neck. Heck yeah, I like that. And um, so yeah, I mean, I personally feel like, you know, overall, kind of some tides have been changing. There's been some like bigger names chiming in recently. Um, X, uh, this guy Cliff Douglas, who like founded the American Cancer Society, mm-hmm. he kind of has been piping up recently, kind of saying, "Look, vaping is awesome, but even like the anti vapers, you're fucking this up. The pro vapers, you're fucking this up. We're gonna have to figure this out. Like, you guys yeah. can't keep fighting with each other all the time." Well, that's so you think that thing. he recognizes the harm reduction factor? Absolutely, and, yeah, good. absolutely. I mean, even just following him on Twitter for the last like month and a half or so everything he tweets is oh look here's some more pro vaping studies oh look here's some more pro vaping science oh here's this you know he even tweeted out an article that was critical of bloomberg and the world health organization and their stance on vaping like he's taking a pretty firm harm reduction stance and going up against like like bloomberg (laughs) you know that's kind of a big deal so it's nice yeah, to it's see going that. up against big guns right but the change from that when it trickles down finally to like legislation and flavor bans and things like that it's going to be a while yeah and it's going to rely on a lot of grassroots like Activation. you know act yeah Activist. activism and and getting your stories out there and i mean it's gonna it's gonna be a long road but harm reduction is gonna win harm reduction always wins that's the thing it just yeah. takes a, a while especially when you have you know, FDA and CDC like actively kind of creating their own weird narrative that doesn't yeah. uh, help anybody. No, it definitely doesn't. Um, you know, like every time I get just so outraged at my computer because I'll be watching you YouTube know. videos, I'll be in a YouTube rabbit hole, and then all of a sudden, truth campaign. Yeah, and I'm no, like, oh, true. go away. <laughs> That's the only thing that pisses yeah. me off why I'm glad that I. DVR stuff on the CW and yeah. like the Flash and you know <laughs> then I can fast forward it because <laughs> they all have those damn truth initiative commercials on there and it's just God does it piss me off do we yeah, need to see smoking puppets anymore 
Yeah, do, we, no. do we need to? The answer is no, and we never did to begin no, with. We never, you know, needed, it, we never needed not. those ever to begin with. Mm -mm. Yeah, I'm pretty crazy. sure they're geared towards getting kids not to pick up cigarettes and not to smoke cigarettes. And I don't know about anyone else, but, but our 14 year old is going to look at those puppets and laugh yes. and be like, oh, yeah. Um, yeah. no, yeah. that's not cool. Yes, but in the same token, a lot of Truth Initiative videos have had vaping been their main focus where they've left smoking cigarettes out of the equation entirely no, it's yeah. because except, the, except that vaping is going to cause you to start smoking you know, they, they right. gotta make that sure too. they throw yeah. that in there yeah of course of course well i mean the fda look fda knew what they were doing They're, fda you know there's all these uh press releases and stuff everything that the fda does is public and they like focus tested the word epidemic you know they focus tested this whole like can we demonize nicotine by calling it a youth epidemic? How does this test with focus groups? How do people respond to these words? Wow. And the conclusions that they came to was that the words youth and epidemic were really, really effective in deterring people from vaping, but it also deterred adults from vaping as well, which they didn't want to happen. So the conclusions that they came to, rather than scrap the whole thing, because that would cost adult lives, they just said, well, we'll keep this epidemic campaign, but we'll make sure that it's only focused at kids and that adults don't see it so that adults might still use vaping to quit. Right. Like, that's a terrible... Like, and this is all... That's... I mean, it's insane. Well, public we, we and got it's horrible. Duped, like, public health got duped by the FDA and this whole focus-tested epidemic word. It's crazy. That, they knew what they were doing. That is they were nuts. blaming it on the youth epidemic. Well, if that ain't targeting, I don't know what is. I mean, it really is. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. But they knew that adults would see it. How would adults not see it? Right? Of course the, adults gonna, are going to see this. Especially if you're a caring adult and watching your child. You know, if you're monitoring well, what they do and what they're watching and everything, you're going to come across this stuff naturally as yeah, well. Go, oh, well, that's one of the things we I'll deal with. Smoking. We just deal with in, uh, in you know, here in, in uh, our household is that uh you know i've had a very long conversation with the kids about vaping right you know and right. uh then they go to school you know um and someone will say something or the, someone in the class will come and speak to the class and they'll come home almost in tears like thinking we're gonna die because we're vaping. yeah 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 instead of the the wonderful miracle that it is that it got you off the combustion yeah absolutely yeah that's why I'm glad that we taught ours at home that much like anything else, it's for adults. Yeah. It's meant to reduce harm. It's meant to be for adults that are smoking to transition off of smoking. Yeah. Yep. Right. I'm thankful I don't have to see those truth initiative or the real cost ads. Yeah. I like I watch you know, they're not stream on Disney Plus. I watch the, you know, the Falcon and the Winter Soldier on Disney Plus, and I don't have to watch the yes. Truth Initiative ad. Oh, yeah. right. <laughs> if that starts starts happening, then uh, maybe they'll figure out yeah. a way for us to DVR our streaming service. But, yeah. Um, <laughs> exactly. But speaking of uh, speaking of uh, uh, Disney Plus and streaming services, mm -hmm. uh, Nick, uh, we've you you touched on this in the uh, in the vlog and a little bit in uh, the, the the Grim Stream. But just how good was Zack Snyder's Justice League? Oh, it was really it, oh, good. Yeah, it's so good. I instantly, I was already, last night I was telling Pickle I want to watch it again. I'm like, I really, really want to watch it again really soon. It was such a different movie. Is it, it was such worth a different four movie. hours? Yeah. Yeah, yeah really but you don't does. have to do it that way either. I've watched it. I'm on my fourth time watching it, and it's broken up into, you know, I watch it yeah. for a little while, and then i got to go do something or whatever. Well, it's, it's great because they kind of put it in parts, right? They did, like, parts one through, what was it, six parts? So you and then the epilogue. Parts, six parts and the epilogue, in, yeah. In the epilogue, yeah. Okay. And so, yeah, I, I, like, watched two hours of it, and then I paused and ate lunch, and then I watched the rest, too. Like, yeah, you can watch it however you want. But the, the honestly, the time, it didn't feel like it drug at all. No. It didn't feel dragging. It didn't feel slow. It was like moving. It had a really good pace. And like before I knew it, when I first paused, I was like, whoa, an hour and 45 minutes. <laughs> I just watched a whole movie, basically. And I'm not even a quarter of the way through this thing. <laughs> it's crazy. Oh, Friggin' uh, HBO Max just released it. Uh, 
uh, uh, uh, it's called Justice is Gray, and it's the whole movie's in black and white. Oh, no, really? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, what is this? Justice is Gray. And then it starts off, it's in black and white. And I'm like, thinking of myself for a second, I'm like, is this whole, Is this what this means? The whole movie's oh. in black and white? So I, fa- I started fast forwarding and I'm like, yep, the whole movie's in black and white. <laughs> That's incredible. How f- I wonder why they do that. Just artistic, you know. Maybe, like, I guess. Oh, it's just it's something a- they... I would love to just get, have a lot of shed time and then watch it in black and white. What a trip that would be. <laughs> yeah. I'll have but, to watch it in uh, color first. I mean, <laughs> I know. I have to watch it in color again a few more times. I- the thing that I, I really enjoyed so much about it was that it finally gave, like, the, 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 the Whedon version cut out so much of the cyborg stuff, the Flash so stuff. So much. Um, you know, and it, it added all mm-hmm. that stuff back in there, and it gave them, like, I did not like the Flash. You know, I'm a huge CW Flash fan. Right, right, yeah. So I, know. I was just like, why couldn't they just have Grant Gustin play this character? Why can't they, <laughs> you know... And then, 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 you know, and I didn't like how the Flash ran with his arms flapping all over the yeah, place. Yeah, he did. You know? It was weird. Yeah. He did really articulate like his his arms and his strides. I like you that. Know, I like the movie verse Flash. I like him. You know, I'm glad there's well, more I'm, of him. I'm just spoiled on the. I've been watching, you know, yeah. CW since the beginning. You know, and uh, I mean, I, I watched it when they they did the spinoff on Arrow, to right, uh, right, to introduce Barry Allen, but. Uh, but this time, you know, it was like, you know, you, you're not, it's such a good story. The, the introduction of him meeting Iris right. and saving her life and, you know, just, uh, it, there, there was a lot of the comedy that Whedon put in there was taken out of it. Yes. And <laughs> that's, what, that's what DC fans want is they don't want Marvel stuff in their no. DC. It has to be separate. Yep. And Marvel can do do what they do they do it great no question about it they do it in a lot of cases better than dc does yeah when it comes to movies but the darkness and the more adult themed uh right. is more what you see in dc movies yeah, yesterday uh, i had i had a marathon i watched man of steel i watched batman v superman uh, ultimate edition and then i started watching justice league i, I didn't finish i'm gonna finish it today but, that's ra- That's a huge marathon. <laughs> yeah, no, I started. That's a banger, dude. I started at like one p.m. No, like two p.m. I started, and uh, by like midnight last night, like I'm in the middle of Justice League, and I'm like, okay, I need to. <laughs> I need uh, to. This is uh, it's a bit much. I want to yeah, go back is... and watch Man of Steel. I haven't watched Man of Steel in a while. I haven't seen Man of Steel like really since I saw it in the theater, and I just remember liking it. I was like, oh, that was good. But I yeah, really and I think I saw it once. And yeah. you know, I'm really hoping this restore the Snyderverse campaign works, because he had plans for a Ben Affleck Batman standalone movie where he fought Deathstroke. Yes. Um, it's Man of Steel two. Um, then uh, Justice League two and three. So I mean, those were all planned out for the. the I want to whole... see it. I want to see I it. Do I too. even want to. I want like a Flash movie. I'd watch a Cyborg <laughs> solo movie. Well, the Flash He's movie a great is coming. Character. The Flash movie is being filmed right now. Yeah. So uh, Flash and it's movie. and it's going to be uh, uh, based around a uh, Flashpoint. Yeah. Oh, is it um, really? Yeah. Only uh, I don't think they're going to do the whole Amazon versus to. the Atlantean storyline it's going to be more around the multiverse oh so you can be willing to bet they will go to that 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 uh part that universe where it's the uh nightmare world where superman's evil and you know oh yeah yeah. that looks fascinating the evil superman that's cool yeah and uh i'm i'm just so stoked i can't it's like once uh in once marvel's uh uh, the Avengers Endgame was done. I was like, I guess I can die happy now, you know. And uh, then all this DC stuff started popping up, and I'm like, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> I'm always happy when they stay true to what the original comics were as much as possible. Because, like, yeah. if you look at the original comics and a lot of the original series, I mean, DC and Marvel, like, there are some some deep kind of dark things going on there that in comics back then weren't a big deal it wasn't something anyone made a big deal out of 
<clears throat> but like I, I understand the ratings and things that we have to have now sure and that they sure. want kids to be able to get into these but I'm I always find myself like sickeningly delighted when I realize just how dark some of these movies are and how they followed the original and it's like well that's why I fell in love with this character to begin with and without that it's not <laughs> worth watching that's right. part of him and why he is the way he is so to see that flow through and come out in some of these newer movies where they do kind of bump the ratings up a bit so that they can keep it more to the people who originally fell in love with it, not the kids of today. Hmm. An R rating an R rating is totally worth hearing Batman <clears throat> say, make yeah. no mistake about it, I will fucking kill you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I know. It really was. <laughs> you know? And even right. earlier on, you had Cyborg say, fuck the world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cyborg, yeah. I'd well, rather hear him say that than booyah. <laughs> Michael That's... Keaton is cast in the... Uh, the Flash movie, yeah. The Flash movie. Holy now, the Jesus. question really? that's on everyone's yeah, mind, Michael though... Michael Keaton as Batman. Yeah, the that's question cool. that's on everyone's mind, though, is... And they've never made this clear. Is he going to be Batman from his universe, the, the, the 1989, you know... Tim Burton universe mm -hmm. or is he going to be and and with that 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 he could be possibly Batman beyond at that point right or is he going to be Thomas Wayne Batman is he going to play that role oh. the, since it's the flashpoint movie since it's a flashpoint movie he's yeah be Thomas Wayne Batman yeah that is here's my money take my money <laughs> yeah <laughs> here's I my know money. and here's the thing it's like either way the fans are going to be the winners in this yeah it's gonna mm. be great i do think it's going to be more of the it's going to be the 89 because they're doing the multiverse is a big deal in this in this movie yeah and uh i think uh they are going to do the the 1989 michael keaton batman from that tim burton universe yeah because ben affleck is also going to be in a movie um as his version of batman so you know we'll see multiverses multiverses yeah. Yep. Yeah, and I, I love of. every. I know. I, I, it's gonna be fun. Well, that's what's great in the uh, in the uh, Arrowverse and the and the CW is they've really dealt with the multiverse up to the point where they did Crisis on Infinite Earths, and they did it so well for what they could do. You know, you couldn't make that that comic book itself. How that comic book went, the budget would be two hundred billion dollars to try to make that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So. Uh, to do it how they did it you know and even in incorporating the 90s flash you know the uh from that the original tv show yeah that, you know, that yes. guy on it who's who's been you know uh who's been on the show he played barry allen's father and then he played uh, jay garrick yep um just you know to incorporate that and they even had clips from the old tv show on there and you know just everything was just you're just sitting there just like your your arms are just your goosebumps are like going crazy yeah. You know, just like, oh, my God, this is so amazing. See, one thing that I love that Snyder did with The Flash was I like his version of, like, what the Speed Force looks like. Yeah. Like, when when Flash just, all of a sudden, you just see the lightning, and you know yeah. he's going crazy fast. Like, he's already tapped into the Speed Force, whatever, and he just moves, and he, like, pushes that glass, and it's liquidy at first, and then shatters. Mm -hmm. Like, the Snyder Speed Force looks... Wow. I think that's well, they really showed they cool. showed both versions because they showed like when he did that thing with uh, where the rock the the part of the building was coming down and the rocks were going to fall on the the hostages. Yeah. You see, Flash just boom, 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 boom. Yep. You know, so yep. you saw that, but then most of the time you'd see him in slow motion, which is which is called on the uh, you know it's called uh, uh, Flash time. Yes. Uh, flash time. Because they can they're moving so fast, it's like everyone else stood still. Yes, 100%. And, and, I, yeah, and so Zack cool. Snyder is like the perfect freaking director for a Flash movie because the man loves himself some slow-mo shots, you know, in all of them. Watchmen has slow-mo shots all over it, 300 slow-mo shots all over it. I mm. loved the slow-mo shots in yeah, 300. slow-mo. So that's perfect for Flash because Flash is all slow-mo. Yep. Zack Snyder, I mean, come on. Oh. Yeah, there's a, there's, a, there's a video on TikTok of... Uh, them going oh there's another slow motion scene on on uh, justice league let me go cook dinner 
There's another slow motion scene. Let me go wash the dishes. <laughs> yeah. There's another slow motion scene. Yeah. Slow motion scene. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, the last, uh, I think my favorite Marvel or DC movies have to be the Deadpool movies. Uh, yeah, I just watched Deadpool uh, yesterday. Did you? The I first one? I spawned or? it. The, yeah, the first Deadpool. It's like, man, I haven't seen that in a while. I want to rock the first Deadpool again, and it's still fucking funny. <laughs> it's still it's so funny. Oh, yeah. It's one of those movies that I can, anyone could be like, hey, let's sit and watch Deadpool, and I am all for that. I've watched it like six times already since the first time I watched it. And I will still. It's like a backup movie. Like it's just so good. It's just undeniably good and like, funny. And it's like a superhero movie that's completely like the Zack Snyder Justice League is like cinema. It's like a film. You like a big, heavy film. And then Deadpool is like, eh. <laughs> 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 it's, like it's like a fun Fa- superhero movie. <laughs> Fa- fans are fans are petitioning to have. Uh, Deadpool replaced Stan Lee in all the cameos and, and future oh, Marvel movies. Yep. Yeah, Are they really? That. Yeah, that's a, that. yeah, that would be great. Heck and yeah. uh, Deadpool 3, you know, they're in pre-production right now, and Jim Carrey is looking like he's going to play the villain in uh, what? whatever character. I don't know, but it's going to be Jim Carrey. Do you think they're going to wow. cast Ryan Reynolds again, you think? They have to. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't go geez. see it if they cast yeah, it, someone else. <laughs> I'm saying the same thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it would have to be Ryan Reynolds. I don't think anybody could do that job as well. Oh, that's fascinating. Jim Carrey. I love yeah, Jim Zach Carrey. Snyder I actually wanted to. Carrey. Yeah, uh, Zach Snyder actually wanted to uh, bring uh, uh, Ryan Reynolds in as Green Lantern at the end of the Justice League movies. Instead Ooh. of what we saw with Martian Manhunter, he yeah. wanted uh, uh, it to be Green Lantern. The studio said no. I would have loved that. I love yeah. Ryan Reynolds as an actor. Him and yes. who's the other one? Johnny Depp. Both of them, they fell in love with their characters. Johnny with um, Jack, and him with Deadpool. Oh, they Jack fell Sparrow. in yeah. They fell in yeah. love with their characters so much, and people love them so much that I mean Johnny Depp doesn't leave to do anything without bringing his Jack Sparrow costume, he and if he to... has downtime. He yeah. will call up a random hospital and have his yeah. people talk to them and just show up with like a half an hour's notice to pillage the hospital and make people feel better. And uh, Ryan that. Reynolds has done the same thing as Deadpool. Like he's like, I've actually just donned the suit and, and just gone out in public for shits and giggles for company. hours at a time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now he owns Mint. <laughs> Ryan Reynolds pretty much he plays Deadpool in every movie now because if you watch any of the other movies he's in he's pretty much acting like Deadpool (laughs) always plays those like smart assy (laughs) oh yeah (laughs) you know it's like Ryan Reynolds it's like his character in Waiting Ryan Reynolds in Waiting Waiting that movie's hilarious that movie's great he's kind of even Deadpool-y a little bit in that (laughs) you drop uh, food on the floor you got oops one (laughs) two three (laughs) <laughs> he was good in R.I.P.D. as well. Mm-hmm. I've still been wanting to see the Hitman's Bodyguard. I, I've always wanted to watch that, that and, and it's with Ryan Reynolds and Samuel Jackson. Oh see, no! That like <laughs> oh, yep, that sounds like a banger right there. Yeah, definitely yeah. gonna have to check that out. Yeah, damn it! And speaking of Samuel Jackson, he may be making an appearance in the next season of The Mandalorian. Oh really? Wait, he's as on, he, Mace Windu? As Mace Windu, he has gone on what on uh, Instagram and said that Mace Windu is not dead. Uh, well, I mean, yeah, that would be great if Mace Windu wasn't dead. Well, all we saw him was fly out the window. Yeah, we didn't see him actually really die. Did. Maybe he doesn't have a canon death. Well, that's like people saying that Jar Jar Binks doesn't have a canon death, and so he could potentially return as well. And I'm thinking, <laughs> somebody yeah, yes. <laughs> Somebody one, made the uh, old Jar Jar Binks. Somebody made the comment about him being a Sith Lord. Yes, <laughs> dude. There's like a yeah. There's a really good fan theory that when you watch this video, it's one of those things. It's like if you watch like a flat Earth video, you kind of go, oh, that's a little bit compelling. But I'm I know that I know that that's fake. Like I know that the Earth is a sphere, right? Right. There's this fan video of where they make the accusation that Jar Jar Binks was a Sith Lord the whole time throughout the whole prequel trilogy. And you mm-hmm. watch this video and you go, oh, I could see that. 
I can see that. Well, remember, he cast I can the vote to give Palpatine the the power. Yeah, he did. He, he, he yeah. gave the Emperor his That's powers. That's true. That's very and so true. if they brought Jar Jar back as like a little bit older and he wasn't so like, Misa, you know, and he was like a Sith, <laughs> I'm, I'm in for that. I want yeah. it. <laughs> I, because that, that is a make things interesting. I wanted to power bomb of all the characters. <laughs> I know. Because he's, he's, he's so, so annoying. Obnoxious. <laughs> but damn it, Mace Windu. That's cool news. That's exciting. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you know, and, you know, like I, I told you, uh, Nick, in. Uh, on the uh, Cool Kids Hangout last week, mm-hmm. um, uh, what's his name? Uh, Terry Silva is confirmed for Cobra Kai season four. Yes, yes, yes. I can't wait so, for Cobra Kai. Yeah, and it just sucks to say we have to wait a year. We have to wait till January. I know, but it won't. You know, it'll go by. I remember first hearing about the Zack Snyder cut of Justice League, thinking March 2021. Are you kidding me? I gotta have wait. To wait that, and now it's like I want to watch it again. Like we won't mm-hmm. even remember, you know. Wait, so when does the next season of Mando start? Watch it in black. Watch it black. When's the next season of Mando begin? Uh, oh, dude, probably in no October. <sighs> too long, mm-hmm. too far away. I'm waiting for the boys. They're filming the boys right now. I want that to come back too. Is that? Oh, I never got a, it. I never I, watched that show. I would You'll love it, Nick. I could You'll not get it. into it. Really? I could not get You'll into it. You'll love it. I was just like, you know what? Superheroes as bad guys? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the, yeah. It's the, the premise. The premise of the show is like, is that the superheroes are a part of this corporation, and they have their face as being superheroes in the public eye, but right. behind closed doors, they're just a bunch of derelict assholes. They right. don't give a shit about anything. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, I'm on board for this. Amazon Prime. All right. Give yeah, it to it's me. it's it's a hundred percent worth your time, Nick. You'll love it. It's just one season right now, or two, two. seasons. There's two okay. seasons. Two seasons. Right. Yeah. Oh, nice. I like that. I like that when I can get on a show when there's only a few seasons. Yeah, because that's what I did. They were they were uh, the second season was going on, and um, all the boys in the uh, vape stew were watching it, and they were talking about it, and I was like, oh, you know what? I got to watch this. Yeah. So I watched the I watched the full two seasons in like, you know, less than a week. Yeah. All right. I'm in. Hmm. The boys. As as of right now, the Mandalorian is due. the The most they've given us is around Christmas 2021. Oh, well, okay. So that's not terrible. <laughs> it's this year. Just a year. Just a year. Look, well, nine, nine year. months away I'll, now. I'll, I'll, that's the thing. I'll gladly wait if it's if you're gonna put a lot of work into it, make it awesome. Absolutely. Know? I'll gladly wait, even if they're like, "Look, we want to make this season really good. We're delaying it until 2022 March." I'd be like, "Okay, I'll wait if you're promising me that it's gonna be worth it." You know. I legit almost picked up a talking Grogu doll from Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> I will yeah. not call him Grogu. I, he's Baby Yoda. That's that's. I'm just calling him Baby Yoda. Grogu. Yeah. I don't know. I go back and forth on it. Yeah. I just like. I like the whole Baby Yoda name. Baby Yoda. Um, but that's what made Cobra Kai season three so worth it. Is they hyped it up for so long. Chosen's gonna be in it. Yeah. Uh, Kumiko's gonna be in it. Friggin' uh, Ali. You know that was. You know, Ali yeah. was in it. And they even like. Oh, we're gonna even have that girl that was uh, the Daniel saved from the. The storm in it, and she's going to save his company. You know. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. I forgot about that. You know, oh, it's that's just, hilarious. It's just so. It, it, it's they're really playing to the fans of what the fans uh, enjoy, and they, yeah. there's so much of this, uh, you know, retro stuff. While at the same time, they're telling a new story at the same time. Yeah. That's why I didn't like the Force Awakens. Was because it was completely retro. It was yeah. the, the same movie. It was the it same was as a much. new hope. It was a new hope. I know. And I see. I loved the Force Awakens. Like the first few times I watched it, I really liked it. Just because I was so excited to have a good Star Wars movie that wasn't the prequels, you know. And mm-hmm. then after a while, I'm like, okay, all right. It is a lot like the first Star Wars movie. I mean, it's a new well, I just kind of retread. I remember sitting in the theater <laughs> when, right. it, when, it, when it came out, and I'm like. Okay, so he's giving the secret plans to the droid who's escaping to the desert planet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's be, you know, 
take my time with it and then just everything was just like oh for fuck's yep. sake. it's like star wars again like okay you know but that's why i'm glad they did like solo and especially rogue one rogue one it may be my favorite one rogue, rogue one is one. just amazing oh, i love rogue one i like, I like rogue, rogue one i still like the last jedi a lot i don't care for the last season or episode nine that was pretty bad but rogue one's good Wasn't mando's that bad. good <laughs> Mando's good. Mando's great. Yeah, and that's the thing when you got new companies coming in and taking over. Uh, you know, this is this is a big talk right now with WWE. Nick, yeah, is uh, the WWE network has been sold to Peacock, so all the WWE content is now on Peacock. Oh, really? Yes. Now the 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 rumor going around oh. is it's just a and it's just a rumor at this point. Is it will NBC buy the majority of stock in WWE, and then it'll basically be there? It'll basically be an NBC company. Then it won't be a McMahon company. It'll be an M- NBC company. And when that happens, are Whoa. we potentially going to have WCW all over again? So, Whoa. you know, but you know, they're 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 going to produce new content, and you know, new things are going to be developed. Right. But will the old guard like it? Just the way the new, the, like Star Wars, is producing new content, but Lucas doesn't like it. Right. Wow, that's a trip. That's crazy. And they're also doing this. This. That's... This you'll hate. Uh, is they're going through and they're uh, removing certain things that might not be uh, too considered uh, PC, so to speak. So. I'm glad I still got all my Attitude Era DVDs. Yeah, you know because they're going to butcher the Attitude Era. They'll butcher the hell out of that if they're going to go through it. Uh, Fortunately, there's a a lot of hours of content to go through, so you know I don't mind if they. uh, They're making it Gen Z PC. Yeah, if if they, I don't mind if they get rid of Mae Young giving birth to a hand. (laughs) uh, (laughs) Yeah, uh, that's fine. Forgot about that. Uh, But don't get rid of. you know, Mark Henry's sexual chocolate entrance. Yeah. You know, don't get rid of the hoe train. <laughs> yeah. Don't get rid of the Godfather stuff. Don't get rid of, uh, you know, yeah. they get rid of that. Yeah. Then you're just like, you know, I'm basically just watching for the matches then, not for not any for the of, fun the, of the story. The fun and of the, the story and all that. Yeah. yeah. Dang. Well, I hope they don't like, you know, sanitize it. That'd be <laughs> depressing to have sanitized. Yeah, well, and I watched uh, I watched the 1992 Royal Rumble the other day, 92. and uh, 92, yes, uh, where Ric Flair won the title. Oh. And uh, I was just like, wow, things are different. <laughs> <laughs> wow, things are yeah. Different. Yep. Um. So I did want to ask you another one. What is it like as a YouTuber? What's it like mm-hmm. with a day in the life of? day in the life of it's you know it's it's not even a matter of like a day in the life of it's like a week in the life of because that's how i think of my work weeks as as weeks because each day is kind of unique and different and i have to focus on different things but it, i have to be really um as regimented as i possibly can be and it's really difficult to do it's really difficult to motivate yourself to to do something that you don't want to do even mm-hmm. though you know you have to do it you know absolutely and it's like it's different because you know at the end of the day if there's work that didn't get done there's nobody else to do it <laughs> that's it it's exactly like, you, you kind of got to get it done so you learn these lessons like pretty quickly so um you know i like to get up early i like to be up by like 7 30 we go on a walk and i generally get in my office as soon as I possibly can and start planning for whatever I have to do that day. If it's a build stream, it's a Monday, I'm doing the build stream. Or if it's a TBN or if it's the vlog, then that's where my main focus always goes is whatever stream is that day, that's the most important thing on my plate. And so once you establish that, everything else will kind of fall into place. Like you have to pick a day for cleaning all your vape stuff. Right. You know, You have to pick a day. Here's my day that is email day. Here's my day that is this day. Here's the day I have. I have, you know, six hours on a Friday, and that's when I have to get majority of, like, my editing done, you know? So I have these, like, this this schedule that I've created for myself that kind of works, but 
it you know you have to stick to it for it to work yeah and it's pretty packed in it's pretty packed in and it's tough and that's why when you know i would love to do like a full live stream with bogan or something you know and people keep requesting it like oh i'd love to see that and i'm like i would too i just don't know when i would possibly fit that into this well, you, got, you got quite a lot on your plate you know? nick for what you do i mean <laughs> You know, you, on Mondays you got both the the coffee stream and then the yeah and then the build stream yeah it's the coffee and stream, then it's Tuesdays the you know Tuesday Tuesday Bro Newsday and yep you know uh, Thursdays the vlog and yeah. Wednesday Wednesday afternoon is the the, the grim stream and yeah but you, you do know, the so, Instagram live stream for Patreons on Wednesdays too don't you yeah yeah, yeah. on Wednesdays you know, so, too geez. and so it's like those are obviously like the most important parts and so whatever stuff I can fit in between them. It's like on Wednesdays, I go to the post office and I mail stuff and then I get back in time to stream. And, you know, so it's wow. like you have, kind of have to create the schedule for yourself and then stick to it. Yep. And it's That's tough the hard to do, part. but you, you, you know, learn like, the lesson pretty quick. You find that when you stick to your schedule and you get your work done, it, it's easier. Like you have a better week and you're not as stressed and, you know, you have to remember. Stuff doesn't pile up it. either. Stuff doesn't uh, pile up. And, like you mentioned, uh, you know, having a day where you clean your clean your stuff. Yeah. You know, clean your clean your vape stuff. I got stuff sitting on my desk that's been sitting on my desk for weeks mm -hmm. that needs to be cleaned. Mm -hmm. I got stuff that's been cleaned that still needs to get put back together. That's still yes. <laughs> yep. Welcome to the net. That's the never ending circle of life in my office. It's like I have piles of stuff that needs to get cleaned. I have stuff that needs to get put together. I've got, you know, and then I have to keep homes. It's like, I got to put all my billet box stuff in here and keep all this clean. You know, it's like, and I love it. It's part of the hobby, but you have to make, you have to definitely make time or it piles up. I'll, if I, if I skip cleaning vape stuff for like two weeks, it's, yeah, it becomes a Herculean task. You're just like, oh, maybe I'll just throw it all away and buy new vape stuff. You know? <laughs> that's, that's like dishes after about a week here. <laughs> it just piles up. Yeah, it's like yeah, dishes. It's like, you know it's what? Like a, no, that's a good just analogy. put them in the trash, and we'll just buy we'll new ones. Buy new, buy new dishes. <laughs> we need new dishes anyway. <laughs> that's why I get all of our Tupperware and dishes from the dollar store. Because, like, if something sits in the fridge in a container for over a week, I am not. Oh, yeah. I don't care if yep. it was in the fridge. I'm not cleaning that container. The whole thing goes in the trash, and it leaves, and I Rich. buy another two-pack for a dollar. <laughs> yep. I agree. Absolutely. Um, I'm not bothered with that. And I know. There's a question I want to ask. Uh, what's up? How has it been, um, you know, I remember back when you didn't want, you know, Casey Pickle she wasn't involved at all no 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 you we're really keeping you know things private yeah now yeah. she's very much involved yeah and how has that been as far as a uh trans you know transition of to where you know your wife was yeah this is only my private life but now she's like you know all your patreons know her very well yes you know yes. there's times that you're not on that she's in this that she's in discord <laughs> yes. talking with us, and with <laughs> yeah, us. yeah yeah no, I, honestly, uh, it's been rad, you know, and I still keep a lot of my private life private from like YouTube and, and Twitter and other social medias. But I guess I felt, you know, after we had established kind of like this Patreon and uh, I felt a lot more comfortable, like introducing the Patreon to my wife. Uh -huh just because I knew you guys get along because she's rad and like I knew that my Patreon like everybody in the Patreon was going to be cool too like I felt comfortable with that and it's like I guess I felt a little bit protective of her like I don't oh, want her sure. to be on YouTube I don't want her to have to deal you know because YouTube can be an ugly place Twitter can be an ugly place and like I don't want to drag her in front of all these people and you know so well, I, I imagine it's happened you know it has happened uh, that she's probably got some fuck it you know shitty messages yeah or, yeah. or you know crude you know. things said to her yeah on I mean, uh you know that's something i try to avoid you know yeah. so i mm -hmm. still keep her still pretty private from like the rest of the internet and like the rest of youtube but it's been honestly really super fun having her get to be a part of the patreon and like her just you know becoming friends with people like michelle lynn and disco potato and then doing their own podcast their show, together yeah. and they're and then they're having fun and like it feels really good and uh, so for so much of Grim Green like from, from when I started really it's been so solitary like it's just a one man show and I do it all and 
I know my, I know what I do, and it's it's very solitary, solitary existence, I guess. And now having Casey to kind of be a part of it and have fun with it, it makes it feel a little bit less solitary, you know, a little bit more inclusive. I don't know, a little bit more fun, and you know, more people, and she's having fun, and I don't know. I, I just like love, it. I just love the fact that uh, you know, power bombing and blowing mud is is now in your vocabulary <laughs> yeah. in your household. Just part of the lexicon. <laughs> yeah, it just is. It's great, you know, and it's and it's been really fun for her too, because you know, she told me she it reminds her of. Uh, you know, way back in the day, back in 2009, when when there was this forum called Vapors Forum, and Vapors Forum was only like 500, 600 people or something, and everybody kind of knew everybody. And Casey was a big part of that because she worked for Pure Smoker, so she was kind of people knew her and uh, like knew her as Casey from Pure Smoker. So mm-hmm. when she got to be part of the Patreon and like jump on Discord and be part of the chats and like video chats and stuff, she was having a really fun time with it because. She said it reminded her of back in the day on the forums when it was just it was about having fun and being part of a community and like knowing people's names and getting to meet new people and talk about whatever and talk about vaping and talk about wrestling and talk about all of our other fun interests. And so I know it's been it's been good for me and she's been having, you know, lots of fun with it because, you you know, everyone's really cool. Well, that's what's been so great for with me for with Patreon and you know the Discord is is being involved in that community and yeah. and becoming friends with people you know all over the world. Yeah. You know, and yeah. you find out that you know the shit that's going on in your backyard is going on in their backyard too. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You know, yeah. it's a lot of this shit is pretty universal. Yeah. And uh, to be able to talk to people, you know, I could be having a just a dog dead shitty day mm-hmm. and i'll jump on on discord and i'll just start you know it's a very positive atmosphere you know we're a lot of times we're just bullshitting we're just we're telling stupid jokes yeah a lot of times we're just being guys yeah you know and just saying dumb things and yeah and then there's Martin. times there's times yeah there's <laughs> yeah, times Martin, in discord Martin, Martin, yeah. yeah there's times in discord that we're all kind of doing our own thing we're watching tv or on our laptops or whatever yeah and then nothing will get said for you know a half an hour <laughs> and then all of a sudden somebody will just it's just like we're just chilling hanging out and then yeah. all of a sudden somebody will say something and it'll lead into this entire conversation into yeah. six different directions and uh you just feel so much better yeah. to have that support system it is you know uh that's helped me with the the my training with getting back into training and you know i'm posting my video my training videos and you know pre and post workout little vlogs um on my TikTok and Instagram accounts. Yeah. And so many more people have, have you know, not just the people in Discord, you know, people in the Cool Kids Club or on the Vape Stew, people from all over the world are chiming in just saying, you know what? I watched your video and it voted made me to go back to the gym and I've been back in the gym for two weeks now. And yeah, you know, it dude, feels so damn that? good to hear that. Yeah. You know? it does. Fuck yeah. How rad is that? And and you know, it's good. I absolutely agree with you. It's really fun to be part of like a good fun positive community and i'm not surprised you know because i'm i spent so many years not having a patreon and and not having like this group of the and and on discord and things like that that when i started this patreon i kind of had an idea i'm like i wonder what because i knew i'm like i think i'm going to get to know some of my subscribers pretty well after i start Mm -hmm. this patreon i'm thinking like what is this group of people going to be like and i felt i'm thinking I feel like they're going to be a lot like me, you know, that we're just, we're going to hang out and have fun and goof off and everybody's going to be cool and welcoming. We'll probably talk about star Wars and wrestling and vaping and we'll have fun and make jokes. And like, I kind of had, and it's cool to see come to fruition and go, yes, like this is, this is it. This is the community that like I, I pictured like being, being surrounded like of the name grim green, like just good, fun group of people it's just really it's really positive and really like like matt said it's helpful to have like a a fun cool group of friends that you can rely on you know regardless of if hooked on funk is on in another part of the world you know you still are bro you know and we still get yeah absolutely i I often i often (laughs) thought that if if discord could have existed in the wrestling world 
the the problem <laughs> is the problem is is that yeah in our discord all of us vape we're all vapors mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in a wrestling discord it would mostly just be fans yes yeah you know, there wouldn't be a lot of wrestlers in there yeah and uh this this actually happened with uh chats back when uh uh, back in like 99 2000 when chatting you know chat rooms and things started i used to go into the chat rooms and i found out that i just had to play a character the whole time i had to be matt sinister in the chat yeah. rooms. i couldn't just <laughs> because most of those fans in there were just and most of the time they were just ripping me apart yeah and uh i'm like well i guess i just have to play the character in here i can't yeah. go on here and just i get to be matt a, sinister the heat. yeah <laughs> which is it has its which had its good points yeah don't get me wrong you know there's plenty of times it's you know, I would never in in you know Discord turn around and say, you know what, you shut up, or I'm gonna bash your head in. You know, <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, if you're a heel, that's the one. That's the one phrase you 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 could go being a heel and just have that phrase your bash entire you existence. No, shut up. Just shut, shut up. Shut up. Just, you know, shut up. You just walk out and go shut up. Shut up. Um, yep. Every but, heel and, does that. And then yeah, every heel does that. And yeah. then uh, then you're dealing with some of the marks that are totally convinced that uh, Bret Hart and Owen Hart guy. really yeah they're convinced that I really am a bad guy. They think that Bret Hart and Owen Hart really did hate each other back in the day. They think yeah. that uh, you know um, <clears throat> they just think so much of this stuff is real, and they want it to be real so badly. And it's like. Okay, I get that when you're in the moment, when you're watching the show, when you're enjoying the show. Right. But then afterwards, it's, it's over with. Just yeah. You know, the movie's done. Yeah, you have to go home. There's like yeah, there's like a. <laughs> they have to go home and be normal people now. Yes, you know? and the, monkeys there, need their peanuts. The, the, yeah, there's not. <laughs> unfortunately, there's not a lot of that in the rest of the world. No. You know, there's just it's people not. that just yeah and. Okay, great. You know, I see a lot of fan videos on TikTok and Instagram of uh, people that love wrestling, but they they some of the things they t they do and some of the things they say they're just taking it way too far, way, way too far. So I was gonna so say just, that like wrestling has some of the. I mean, my fans. father was a NASCAR fan, and they can get a little crazy, but like you're not gonna see the stands up turning if something goes wrong. <laughs> Football fans, again, can get crazy. But I've never seen a crazier set of fans than people who follow wrestling. Yeah. Because they are so engrossed in the stories they see and the characters you guys portray. Yeah. That, like, I mean, you'll, you'll see dudes flipping tables in bars, yeah. like, over yeah. these semi-scripted, scripted fights that happen between these characters and it's like, whoa, 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 whoa bubba. <laughs> Easy bubba. It's like, dude, calm down. Yeah, Easy it, now. I, I mean, I had, and it's even worse in Mexico and with uh, Lucha Libre fans. I mean, to them, I I had times where I worked a lot of Lucha shows, you know, coming from California. There's a lot of, lot of yeah, Mexican wrestling. Like and I literally had days where I either had security escort me out or I had to just sit in the locker room and wait like an hour or two after the show was over because there were fans outside waiting to fight me. <laughs> yeah, well, Lucha Libre is a whole other, a whole other thing. They they have a it's a it's a big part of like their culture and history. They take Lucha Libre very seriously. Very seriously. Like, yeah. They don't, the, you know, the Lucha Libre guys. They don't take their masks off in public. You know, they're it's it's like the Mando. You know, it's cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's just like yeah. the Mando. Yeah. It is, uh, seriously. El, El Santo, who is one of the most famous Mexican wrestlers of, uh, ever, was buried in his mask with his wrestling boots on was he really yeah that's you know awesome <laughs> um mil mascaras is another guy uh wore his mask everywhere you know constantly i did catch him with the mask he would in the locker room he kayfabe you know that's a wrestling term kayfabe it you know kept it quiet um stayed in character where he would change his mask in a bathroom stall or he had a trick that he would do where he, he was able to change his mask while he you know but I caught him once where I was in the bathroom stall and he was in, in the, at the sink washing his hands and he lifted his mask up to wipe his face 
and I looked up and I looked at him and I'm like, ah. ah. <laughs> he put it down really quick and he got mild. He's like, Cayete, Cayete. Yeah, Cayete. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. Oh, that's, that's so good. That's well, part of what I like about the YouTubers, too, is that you guys are all the, the handful that I've met through Lethal <laughs> because otherwise I wouldn't meet you guys. The hand through I've met, the handful I've met through Lethal have been freaking great. Like well. Bogan when we had Bogan on, <laughs> yeah, I am not the biggest Bogan review fan. <laughs> He's oh, good at what he does, and it's great for that. But just, just the local, sheets. yeah, the local cultural language that he's used to is not something <laughs> I'm fond cause, of. Because sure. they say "cunt" a lot in Australia. Thanks, yeah. Matt. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> but like hanging out with him over video chat and just mm-hmm. talking and shooting the shit, like yeah. there are so many good people that like you see them on YouTube and you're like, oh, they they can't be that friggin that that person in real life and then you're shooting the shit with them and having a beer through video and you're like ah, ah, this is yeah. this is awesome this is the oh, same yeah. person <laughs> that's the thing like if you start off doing your reviews as like a genuine you know a genuine person a genuine thing and you just present yourself as you are you never have to fake it no you can be just the genuine person the whole time you know mm-hmm. it's interesting yeah, it's like the difference like when you watch old rip trippers videos and he was just <laughs> Hey guys, Rip Trippers here. I got this RDTA I wanted to talk to you about. And I've been liking this thing. And then, like, a few years later, it's yeah. like Rip Trippers the character. And he's like, <laughs> you, know, and he, yeah. you know, it's like this whole big thing. And it's like, oh, he became a character. You can tell. RDTA. <laughs> the yeah. first, like, the, that was the age that I came into his vape videos. That was his personality right there. Uh, and yeah. that was when I first started vaping. And when I first saw him on YouTube, I swear to God, he was on drugs. <laughs> I swear. He's I, a real intense, you know, yeah. personality there. I so just, is uh, Indoor Smokers. I used to watch him. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Indoor that Smokers. That guy was, yeah. a, was such a character. Yes. Yeah, and it eventually, character. It got to the, it eventually got to the point where it was like, hey, you know, this is too much. I, I can't. Yeah, I try. Yeah, <laughs> that's why I try to be, like, pretty chill. Like, even when I'm excited, I'm like, okay, let's, let's try to keep this, you know. I don't want people... I'm not going to be rip trippers here. Mm. Well, like, and it's funny because you've got people who are the opposite, who, like, you look at them and you watch them and you're like, dude, that's that's got to be like in character, like that's got to be their thing. And then you meet them in person, and you're like, nope, nope, not their thing. That's them. Nope. That's yep. them. Yeah, that's, that's them. really them. That's they are. Just them. That's, that's, there you go. Yeah, uh-huh. my buddy well, Gabe. Yeah. Let's yes. Not mention Jay. <laughs> Let's not bring up Jay Hayes now. <laughs> Gabe. Oh. Gabe. <laughs> Gabe you know, is a perfect funny. example of that. You know what's funny? <laughs> uh, I don't think you noticed it, Vic. Was uh, on the vlog Thursday, Jay Hayes popped in the chat. I saw that briefly. Yeah, you saw that. And then chat. as soon as I saw him, I go, I put, hey, it's the Gene Simmons of vaping. <laughs> and then right below it, right below it, he gave that $100 super chat. And I was just like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Because oh, Gene Simmons great. does not donate to anybody. They give me money uh, to... Uh, me money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, oh my great. goodness. Yeah, Jay's, Jay's, Jay's fine. I'll always defend Jay his. He's just, you know, he he does it for the clicks. Like, he likes drama, and he yeah. knows why he does it. And the people that watch <coughs> knows why he does it. And the people that watch like the drama. So Drama ah. sells. Well, yeah, it took a little while to where ah. I was watching him... Uh, you know, I'm still subscribed to him. I still watch him sometimes. Yeah, I'm sub to him. Um, and there's occasion you know, where I'd start to realize, I go, even when he's acting like he friggin' invented everything, this is all part of his gimmick. <laughs> this really is just is. all part of his character. If you right? know, right? Like, if you know, like, right, like, it's kayfabe. Like, yeah, it's just his gimmick. Like, it's when I met him gimmick. at NVE, when I met Jay, uh, he yeah. was not <laughs> like you see him yeah. on camera. Not at all. He was very super dude. just normal guy. Yeah, you know, super normal dude. Absolutely. At the well, same time, I do like the Gene Simmons of vaping comparison, though. So it's yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it's super funny because, yeah, yeah. like, with Jay Hayes, the reason it's worked for him the way that it has for so long is he's built for it. Like, there are some yeah, people yeah. that just are not built to use drama to continue to get what they they're looking for. 
Yeah, it's like Where, then you've got guys like him that are, I mean, they're hardened soldiers in a way. Like, yeah, they don't care. True. They give yeah, none of the true. shits. Yeah, and I don't, see, I'm the opposite. I don't <laughs> want drama. I don't like drama. I don't like dealing with drama. I don't. I don't need it anywhere around me. I'm not built for that. Yeah, right? exactly. So like, I've, I've well, got to give it's, it's a point. tough thing. It's a tough thing if you're going to do a gimmick, if you're going to play a character in a world that doesn't, that the majority of the people that are in it are not playing characters. They're just being themselves. Right. So if you're going to do that, you could really get lost in the in the drama to where then you what's called in wrestling working yourself into a shoot. Yeah. To where oh. it started off as a work, and then I, I it turns into it. It turns completely into a, a real drama. Yeah. And you didn't want that. You're like, look, I'm just playing a role here. I'm just trying to have fun, and play a character. And then you people took it so damn seriously that it turned into me going back and forth with mean tweets back and forth to everybody. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Into a shoot. That's yeah. funny. Oh, yeah. Man. That's that's what uh, <laughs> that's what Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels say about what happened with them that led to uh, Montreal was that oh, they really? that they just worked themselves into a shoot because they were uh, saying they were, you know, and it was also at that time where real life was starting to blend its way into the fiction of the wrestling world. Mm -hmm. And you guys were out there doing interviews and promos and stuff, and they were saying real life things. And uh, in the, in the beginning of that, it was really hard to differentiate between, okay, you're just saying that because, people know about it and right. we're trying to work something around it or you're saying that because you're an asshole hmm. <laughs> right <laughs> oh man yeah so like uh you know if you remember uh sean michaels uh made the sunny days comment at uh at bret hart he said you've been ex you've been having so many sunny days <laughs> which he was implying that that bret was having an affair with sunny the, the, right the sunny days yeah the reality of what was going on was Shawn Michaels was having an affair with Sonny. That was going on. What was going on. <laughs> That's the reality. But it literally, it literally led to, uh, you know, real hard, bitter feelings between the two of them. Yeah. Yeah. You know, especially when like, you know, someone on the outside, like Bret Hart's wife at the time heard that. And he's like, what does he mean by that? You know, and it, it, it causes real, right? yeah. It blurs the lines. It blurs it, the lines. You know, and uh, maybe Jay Hayes has become the character. Maybe he really is that angry all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I just still think there's no. times Jay Hayes is practicing in the mirror. Just you know, just... I, that yeah, brings no, me no, back to like. I think he has like natural charisma. Anyway, yeah, sorry. That's true. No, no, that brings me back yeah. to the Cat Williams stand-up. How can you be mad at breakfast? <laughs> <laughs> How can you be mad at bacon? How can you be mad at bacon? <laughs> you can be mad at bacon. <laughs> oh, man. You could be mad at bacon when it runs yeah. out and there's no more. I just, yeah. you know, I find it exhausting being like that mad uh, all the time. Like, I've talked about this in the it last vlog. It's just, it takes a lot of effort and it's really exhausting. And I don't find much satisfaction in it. Like, it is. If uh, you remember uh, the, how Brian Pillman was acting before he yeah, died, yeah, the whole the whole the whole loose cannon character. Yeah, I tried to incorporate a little bit of that because the internet was new, and you could go online, go into chats, and try to convince people of this that, and you know, I'd go on radio shows and be sure, this character. Sure. Eventually, you know, I found myself doing it like at my job. <laughs> right, right, right. Like, oh, okay. too far. Let's back. And then back you get people coming up to me going, "What the fuck is wrong with you?" You know, yeah. <laughs> what the hell is your problem? Man? Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, goddamn it. Ah. You know, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, you know, it, line the lines do get blurred. Um, mm -hmm. So I think it's it's really good that uh, you be able to take the, take a step back and look at things in perspective yeah, like I've done with Jay Hayes and going he's just working a gimmick he's just yeah, playing he's a character a gimmick. Mm. and he does it I mean he does it pretty well he does it pretty well he I didn't really like what he did to Twisted but uh, eh, yeah. yeah it, whatever Twisted handled it really well he just ignored it you know he didn't give a shit like yeah. I've made my money I have my fans and I got a whole new career on Twitch fuck you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really? oh man so how about music? Have you gotten anything new lately for music. albums or? Uh, no, I mean, let's see. No, not really. I haven't really got anything new. 
Uh, not really. I've honestly been enjoying like um, listening. I've been, you know, cause, you know, I've been sharing like my old uh, my old band's music on the on the vlog, and we have a pretty long catalog, and it's been really fun talking to my old buddy Jim and going back and listening to all of our old metal songs, and it's been getting me into like more of that. Like I used to listen to a lot of like uh, Rob Zombie, so I've been listening to Rob Zombie again, and like that kind of like. I don't even know what you would call it. It's metal, but it's like new metal. Yeah, new metal y I guess. Just a lot of Rob Zombie lately, a lot of like chugga chugga, like freight train metal. It's been re- I don't know. It's been fun. Freight train metal. Yeah, it's like a like metal that sounds like it's just a non stop freight train coming at you. Just, yep. just coming at you. Kinda like a like little that. bit of corn. Corn has that, that kind of sound to it a little bit. Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, I mean, otherwise it's been good. And I've been listening to weird stuff like uh, become obsessed with that uh, Haley Williams pedals for armor album. It comes on as like my uh, alarm clock every morning, and it's like this chill Haley Williams singing to me every morning. It's like ah, oh, such a delightful Williams. way to. Wake it sounds up. like the the cool sister from that uh, tennis team there, Venus and Serena. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Haley was the cool third sister. The cool third sister. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like uh, what's her name. Uh, who plays Scarlet Witch? Uh, oh yeah, uh, yeah Olsen. She's uh, yeah. she's yeah, um, she's, she's related to the Olsen twins. She's the sister, yeah. the Elizabeth younger Olsen. sister of the Olsen twins. Yeah, you know, and, and I didn't the Olsen twins that are for weird. A long time. <laughs> Never mind. I'm yeah. not gonna make that joke. Yeah, don't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll use that one in the cap. I, I was gonna make reference to Brie Olsen also being related in some way, but we're not gonna go there. <laughs> 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 Maybe uh, in some of the categories. Uh. <laughs> she was the, um, yeah. Uh, so uh, what have topic. I gotten? I, um, I, dude, I got that uh, VNYL, that subscription service that mm-hmm. I, I think I mentioned to you. Uh, they got their package into me. Three records they picked from just giving them my musical tastes and metal and punk and stuff like that that I, like, nice. I enjoy. Oh, that's and they proud. actually nailed it. They actually nice. friggin' nailed it. Um, no bands that I've ever heard of before. Uh, one it's band all stuff is called. You like? Yeah, it's uh, Ringworm is one band. Uh, the name of the album is Church Snake or no Snake Church, and um, that one's actually pretty good. It's um, it's heavy metal. It's not sure. like super thrashy, but sure. then they've got uh, Goliathin they sent me which was I just like the name of that band Goliathan yeah Goliathan is good but it's all instrumental it's all oh, instrumental it? metal yes see I like some good instrumental metal see there used to be this band that I used to love that was unfortunately named Isis oh, okay they were Isis before Isis was like an Isis thing <laughs> I've heard of them their <laughs> Isis was about like uh, you know it, it, like ancient Egyptian stuff like mm-hmm. that and it was mostly like instrumental like sludgy metal yep. stuff and I loved it. I loved it. I loved Isis. I feel like I might be into Goliathan. Just their name kind of sound reminded me of like that type of Albion. Uh, music. Albion was the name of the album. A-L-B-I-O-N. Yeah, see the first song's eight minutes. That's perfect. Yeah, it's yeah. it's a three song <clears throat> album. On yes. Two songs on one side. The first song, Albion, covers the entire side of one vinyl <laughs> yeah one song in eight minutes i know exactly kind of what to expect from this oh yeah um and then what was the third one third was a band called lies and the name of the album is plague and it's like speed punk slash hardcore whoa and it, like i said they nailed the selection on this one uh, I just gave them in my profile. That is me, right? Yes, that's that knocking. is you every okay. time you turn. Yeah, that's my chair. <laughs> uh, just when I go fill up my profile, I tell them what genres I like listening to. They have a box sure. where I put in my favorite bands, and then they've got a, a box oh. underneath where it says, I don't want to listen to any of this. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and so, uh, Whoa, and then, that's cool. Yeah, and then they handpick it for you. if Because uh, they'll give you a short list selection each month. But on that list will always be one selection that says curated, and if you okay. if you select curated, they'll hand choose your record for you that month based on what you listen to. 
Oh, see, that's rad. Yeah, and uh, I so this band. oh, lies. I think I found this band. Lies. It, that's a hard band to find. Mm. Try to find a band named Lies. That's impossible. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, how do you even Google that? <laughs> <laughs> but um, yep, yeah, Ringworms. Uh, Snake Church album was really, really good. That was my number one out of the three that they sent me. Uh, Lies was number two. And because I do like the instrumentals on it, the music on it is great, but because it lacked vocals, I kind of put it in third right. place with Goliathan. But still really good music. But um, I opted to do that again this month. So, uh, But I did it live on on Instagram. I went live and I opened the box and everybody joined me. We just played one track off of each album and oh, we were digging cool. it. Digging it. So I'm going to do that again. Um, also speaking oh, yeah. of music. This Lies band is pretty intense. Yeah, you guys you guys are talking yeah. about these bands and I'm just sitting there going, just put some Sammy Hagar on. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Sammy Hagar, that's fine. Just give me some Hagar. Give me you some know. Hagar. I, 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 there, Hagar. Is, there is newer music that I listen to. Like, I'm a you know I'm a big Shinedown fan, and Shinedown's not new, but they, they you know they started right. this century. Right. Um, <laughs> right. Uh, but uh, um, I'm still like you get my you know Aerosmith, Sammy Hagar. Yeah. You know, I just I I, I have yet to really shit. discover uh, music that can top that. There's music that I like, and yeah. I'll enjoy, but to you know I just. There's a reason these bands are still around. Yeah, 100%. Well, there's you know. a reason like why Sammy Hagar's a legend. Mm -hmm. You know. <laughs> there's a reason why Aerosmith is a legendary band. Yeah. Like legendary bands. Oh, yes. And, you know, they are, you know, Sammy Hagar and uh, Steven Tyler are some of the few guys still that have been around for so long that still can belt it out like they did in the 70s and 80s. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's still just amazing that they they've taken that good care of their voices. And you would think with Stephen, you know, he's done more drugs than, uh, you know, a uh, people at the methadone clinic. You know, I mean, <laughs> the guy's just he's lucky he's alive. You know, that's the unfortunate part when you go see Ozzy, because Ozzy's not the same. Yeah, Ozzy, Ozzy's in rough shape. Yeah, I, I, last oh. concert I watched of his, he was on stage for forty minutes, and that uh, was it. Yeah, he just couldn't do anymore. You know, and I think that's that's I th see. I think that's an important part of someone's career, and I hope I have that part of my career. But it's like, you know, it's like Frank Sinatra in his latter years. He was performing in my hometown, Lake Tahoe, Nevada, mm -hmm. all the time at the casinos, and he did his final performances in Lake Tahoe, and he sounded not like Frank Sinatra. He sounded pretty bad, right? But it was still Frank Sinatra. Mm. And even when you see Frank Sinatra and he sounds bad, it's still Frank Sinatra, and it makes you appreciate how he, like insanely talented this guy is, and how you know, like you can listen to his old records and go, "Whoa, he sounded good." You know, you appreciate yeah. how good he used to sound. Right. And so I think that's yeah. like a, a you know, I, even though he sounded bad, I you know you still appreciate it. Absolutely. And the thing about the thing about Sammy Hagar, though, that you don't see with a lot of older artists, is he's still putting out new material. He's yeah, still oh, doing, yeah, he is. You know, he's still putting stuff out. And yeah, why would you not? Uh, he has even Ozzy, Ozzy still puts stuff out. You know, uh, yeah. It, it it's just, you know, and I don't I don't have the mentality that that like like say Metallica fans have about sure. a pre Black album. You know, I enjoy newer stuff. I enjoy when they when they release new stuff. I'm just going, you know, I'm just going to put Crazy Train on. No, no. Yeah. I'm going to, uh, no, I'm going to put Under the Graveyard on because it's a, you know, when I listen to music, you know, it's primarily in the car. Of course, half the time when I'm in the car, I'm listening to Howard Stern. So, I used to listen to music in the car. I don't drive anywhere anymore. So. Yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> you, know, you got a point. But, you know, I listen to, you know, my playlist on when I'm working out. When I'm at home, I like to put a live concert on. I don't want to just listen to music. I want to watch the band perform. Yeah, that's smart. Absolutely. Yeah. That's um, that's something I'm actually looking forward to. Coming up is a there's a virtual concert on April 24th. Corn's putting on called Monumental. Oh, nice. uh, they're going to be performing from the set of Stranger Things. Which really? Is, yeah. Which is going to be pretty Whoa, cool. Oh, that's a trip. 
Yeah. So they're That's gonna be cool. performing on on the twenty fourth there. I've actually got a week uh, a week from tomorrow, and I will have my meet and greet with them. So um, Ooh, I'll be meeting Corn real quick virtually, and then we've got another show in July scheduled here in Boston that we're planning on going to. Um, that is Lamb of God, Megadeth, Trivium, oh, and In Flames. Nice. That's oh, nice. the one that I'm going to end up That's meeting up with them. That's going to be a banger of a show. That's going to be an incredible show. Fun Hell fact, yeah. Randy Blythe, singer of Lamb of God, he quit smoking with vaping. I heard that. Yeah. I did hear that. He did. He quit with vaping. And he emailed me because I made fun of Lamb of God on <laughs> GrimGreen.com. <laughs> because I was talking, I, this was forever ago. I was post on GrimGreen.com about like vaping celebrities. And I talked about how Leo, Leo DiCaprio was vaping and Katy Perry was vaping. And I mentioned, I mentioned Randy Blythe from Lamb of God, but I kind of took a dig at Lamb of God because I was like, I don't really like Lamb of God. So I'll just make fun of Randy Blythe. And he emailed me and he's like, Hey, like, how many Metallica fans does it take to screw in a light bulb? You know, he's like, fuck you. Master Puppets is the best album of all time or something like that. And so, (laughs) and so, and, but he was really, really like, really super like nice about it. And he was like, thank you for writing about Lamb of God. And he's like, um, where, and we exchanged a few emails back and forth. Like I told him where I lived. And he's like, well, we're coming on tour. Like, we're going to be in Oakland. If you can come down to Oakland, like, we could meet up and maybe I could do an interview for you or something. Like, we had plans, but it just never happened. Oh. They didn't go. They didn't ever. <laughs> they never came to Oakland. They never, I could probably still email him and hit him up, but it's been, dude, it's been years since I Holy emailed him. Holy cow. Years. See, that's another dream come true. Yeah, right you there. still could. Though. <laughs> you could email I probably him. could. Like, oh, yeah. I probably could hit him up. But I don't, you know, I don't want to take no. of, too much advantage of that. Like, Absolutely he's been not. kind enough to me. Like, just the fact that you got an email from him is like, <laughs> whoa, pretty cool. Like, it was. I was really surprised. I was really like, is this the real really Randy shocked. Blythe? Yeah. I was like, what is happening? But it oh was. I, mean, it really I need, was. I need so, a picture of you holding up the peace sign with your left hand to prove cool. that yeah. it really is you. <laughs> All today's, right. Yeah, today's newspaper, you know. But yeah, he was a smoker. He's like, I, I quit with vaping. He's like, I'm still vaping now, but I'm going to try to quit vaping like in the next year or so. And he did. He quit vaping. But he was a heavy smoker. Like he told me he was a heavy, heavy smoker. That's crazy. And vaping just fucking worked for him. So yeah, like, so, okay, uh, I, uh, I like Lamb of God a little bit more now. I guess Eddie Van Halen uh, started vaping. Uh, oh in, yeah, in his last few years, but it, it it was too late by that point. Yeah, that was you know? uh, too little, too late. A few I years mean, ago. he had he had tongue cancer, and he he beat tongue cancer, and he kept smoking. Yeah, but I mean, imagine I remember, if he had had vaping. Yeah, mm. you know, and it yeah. was until that last couple of years of his life he discovered vaping, and it, it, yeah, if he'd had vaping, man, maybe he'd still be with us. You know? Yeah, it was. A, a, uh, it's not out of the realm of possibility. There was a, and there was going to be a reunion too. That's the fuck. This thing that's so screwed up is there was going to be a full Van Halen reunion with both Roth and Sammy, and it just it never uh, got off the ground because of Eddie's health. Oh my god, that would have been amazing. Yep, everyone was finally paid... old enough and mature enough to go. You know what? We don't Let's have to just, act like jackasses right. anymore. Let's just do this for the fans. Let's just right. go put on a, a rock show. Yeah. God, that would have been amazing. Yeah. I'm super excited for the Dropkick Murphys release on their new album in May. <laughs> That's true, Super too, freaking yeah. excited for that. They're Dropkick doing another live show. April 30th is their new album release, <clears throat> and they're doing a show on the 1st, April, uh, May 1st, of their entire album. And they're playing songs that they didn't play on the St. Patrick's Day show. So friggin' excited for that. Yeah, they're going to be doing that free online again, just like they did. uh... And See, Dropkick Murphys is one of those other bands that they've been around for so long, Mm -hmm. and they're still doing it, and they still have that, like, fan base, and they just keep cranking out albums. And they still have the energy. Yeah, and they still have the energy to do it. Well, the great thing about bands like that is the ones that last and the ones that become legends are the ones that can adapt and overcome when it comes to new generations. Right. Like, yeah. you can't Content just have evolution. one fan base because as your fan base starts to get older and lose their... I, I don't even want to say motivation. Stamina? Well, Stamina. yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, yeah, eventually it becomes just a bunch of guys doing it for money. 
yeah. as opposed to guys that are out there really enjoying it. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, the Rolling Stones don't need money. Right. No. You know, they, if they fun. go out and do a show, they sad. do it because they, they, they enjoy it or Mick had another kid. <laughs> um, <yeah>. but, <laughs> but like Dropkick Murphys, I can listen to those and our 14-year-old our listens to them as well. Yeah. You know, In Flames is new-ish, but like he listens to it and so does she. And yep. there are like, there are bands like that that... Mm -hmm just kind of withstand the test of time and that's the great thing about digital media being the way it is now yeah. is when I was a teenager if you didn't have the cassette or the CD no. like yeah. you didn't listen it. to it no but and like nowadays In Flames have been bef I just heard the about them 90s. recently shush <laughs> can you remember driving around looking for a record like yes. you went to one record store and it wasn't there oh, yeah. to go to another one. I had two right, options you know. in Lake Tahoe. And if it wasn't there, it's like, all right, do I drive 40 minutes up to Reno? Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> now, That's it. Now we, we have this digital media where we can pull up. Like if I want to watch the, the, if you remember the Moscow Music Peace Festival from the late 80s. Oh, you know, yeah. That's on YouTube. Yeah. You uh, know. Yeah. That's, that's, the, yeah. I love that there's, about the internet. That's one of the best yeah. things that the internet has brought to us. There's a, uh, a Bon Jovi concert from 1992. Um, it was the uh, Keep the Faith uh, tour. And oh. when the Keep the Faith album was released. And they, they did this uh, concert on MTV. And they opened up with, uh, with a little help from my friends. Oh, you yeah, know, And then dear. they covered the animals. Uh, um, uh it's my life and uh we got to get out of this place you know so you know seeing you know that i could just put that on youtube anytime yeah. i want it's it's and i could put it on in the car you yeah. know yeah it's just it's that is so cool someone uh, abs someone just the other day uh it's funny that you bring that up someone just the other day on twitter this was more like last week uh it was late at night and someone i follow on twitter posted uh, a link to a youtube video that was like it's like, oh, here's Rush's 1978 concert at this famous arena that's never been seen before, and it's fully restored in 4K, and it's on YouTube. So go watch it. I'm like, I love the internet. This is incredible. Yeah. Like, you you get to just watch a night like a, a 70s concert of Rush that's fully restored in 4K for free, just streaming into your house. That's unbelievable. Yeah. It's amazing. I remember when you had. You know, like before touch tone phones, man. Right. Mm -hmm. well, I remember oh, I, have rotary a, I, I had a shelf, oh, yeah. I had a shelf <laughs> filled with VHS tapes of, you know, all the seasons of Star Trek and right. yep. all the, you know, I used to have this, uh, these VHS tapes that I, that I listed as my garbage file, which was just ver a variety of different things that I recorded on TV, you know, that I thought <laughs> yep. that I thought at the time you know what, I want to save this because you never know, you know, they might decide not to air this ever again. Right. And now you can just pull it up on YouTube. It's right there. Yep. I yep. love that because my nanny and papa spoiled right me, spoiled me growing up. And my grandmother had a VHR, uh, the recordable VHS. Mm -hmm. And during the week she would record things like she'd see Care Bears Cloud Nine was coming on like Tuesday at 9 a.m. And she would make sure that she was home Tuesday at 9 a.m. to record that onto a VHS tape and label it for me. And then when yep. I came up that weekend and I was like, I want to watch Care Bears. And Care Bears wasn't on cable on the weekend at that hour. She could just be like, oh, I recorded this for you. And I still have those. <laughs> and I will never get rid of those because they've got her handwriting on them. And like the That's love amazing. that went into the dedication yeah. to do that, what a great is so great, delightful. Like what a great thing to have. <laughs> like just that's just such a great thing to have. See, and I, I wish I had kept. I used to record The Simpsons. They used to come on at six p.m. on Fox every day, and so uh -huh. my VCR was just programmed to record at six p.m. every day, regardless of if I was at home. And then after like a few days, I'm like, oh, I have like eight episodes of The Simpsons to watch. This is great. <laughs> was Simpsons, you know, have a Simpsons binge. That was great. Yeah, I, in my I remember house. There, was, there was a uh, sci-fi show called Babylon 5. I don't know if you were watching that. Oh, yeah. yeah Babylon um, and uh, I set my VCR to record this two-part episode to record and to record the you know, first part got recorded. And then I set my VCR to record the second part. And there was a power outage. 
and so it you know you know i come home and everything's blinking you know and i had to wait just... until the whole series recycled till oh you know on, on tnt <laughs> till i could no. watch that episode again <laughs> You know, Babylon Five's yeah. on HBO Max now. They they remastered it and put it oh, on is HBO it really? Max. Oh, I'm gonna yeah, have to I, watch I already that. watched the I already watched the whole series again. Shit, I haven't watched Babylon Five in a real long time. You know, I watched that. I watched all the movies. I like, yeah, love that show. The struggle used to be real back in the day. The, I there was one time, uh, my brother and my dad and I used to watch wrestling. You know, every time it was like uh, Saturday night. What was it? Saturday night's main event. We used to watch Saturday night main event yeah. every every Saturday. Saturday night main event. Saturday night main. Event until one night uh, we had to go out to dinner so we set the VCR to tape it and we were all pumped and then we got home and we did not record Saturday night's main event what we recorded was like three hours of the Westminster Kennel Club dog show <laughs> oh no <laughs> so, you know, we're pumped we're driving home we're talking about wrestling we're that gonna go Monday watch all Raw. wrestling and we sit down we're all excited we're like what Crap. Hell, yeah. what what, what, what? That's, where's the wrestling that, that... That would have been Monday Night Raw because uh, Monday Night Raw would get preempted on USA for the Westminster Kennel oh, Dog Show. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That yeah. was it. <laughs> yeah. It would have been great so. at our house if it wasn't for my mother being a Nazarene church pastor and my grandparents that liked to record everything and bring them to our house. Uh. They had like HBO. They had the movie channel, yeah. The actual like the movie channel. It was yeah. called the movie yeah. channel. Yeah, the movie yeah. And um, they used to record everything. They'd bring it over. And my mom, like I said, she was a pastor of a Nazarene church. And uh, I'm sitting there digging through these video, and I'm watching Missing in Action one, two, and three. And I'm like, <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> my mother dude, did not like that. I can no, believe no, it. I, I, I bet not. No. <laughs> and I used to, I used to have to, every time I went over to my, my, my parents' house, my dad would be like, hey, I need you to look at my VCR. And, of course, I'd go in there and it'd be, you know, electrical tape over the clock. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'd, I'd fix it. You know, i go, Dad, you just you, the channel was on the wrong channel. That's all it was. That's and i go, even was. set your clock for you. But every time I would go to Las Vegas to see him, uh, when they lived in Vegas, it was always the same thing. I'd go in there, and it would be he turned the wrong channel, and the clock was blinking <laughs> every single time. Every oh, single man. time. My grandparents yeah. do that. They had a power surge like a week to a week and a half ago, and it blew out TVs. It blew out all of their power strips. It fried, fried their computer. Their computer. Yeah. Like computer was Whoa. dead in the water. So my grandfather called me up and he's like, "Well, transformer." Can blue. you um, can you come up and help me get a new computer and maybe troubleshoot the TV because now we can't do. My grandmother has to have headphones on to hear the TV. She needs it high volume, and he does not. So they need something with dual audio capability so she can plug her headphones in, but he can still hear the regular TV volume. Sure. And that had blo something had glitched the system in the process of that, and they could only do one or the other. But that's that's why I'm glad I have Lethal because I can bring him with me, and I'm like, yeah, that you know, can you ask Chris to? Yep, we'll we'll come up, go out, <laughs> yeah, yeah. he handed us Family the money, IT we guy. went and, <laughs> we went and got yeah, him a new computer, got it set up in like a half an hour, the little banger, all in one job. And it, they, they still do that to me. He called me up like two days later and he's like, hey, I'm trying to figure out how to set the this on the this. Can you oh, can you click this and then click that? Man, oh, okay, just, thank you. It just suddenly becomes your job. <laughs> yeah. I just didn't know about it. Have you guys <laughs> oh. have you guys realized that we're starting to turn into those older people now where kids are bringing us these technological yeah. devices and we're like, what is this? Yeah. <laughs> what do I do here? Happens, I'm like, know? TikTok? It, what the hell is TikTok? I don't yeah, know how to use you TikTok. You try to stay up to date <laughs> or you just don't, you know? That's it. Well, you either change with the times or you get left behind. That's right. That's right. Well, hey, we are winding down on time, but I do want right. to uh, go through our next segment that we started last week. Uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to add some songs to our playlist. Yeah. How about you, Nick? Can you give us three suggestions of songs? Oh, three songs? Three songs, uh, what, any, any artists. Any artists? Any, any artists, any bands. Anything. Whoa, Full freedom. I'm so unprepared. 
I'm so unprepared. Um, <laughs> or I won't be disturbed. I'm too disturbed. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, hang on. Let me get to it because there's so many good songs. I'm going to get to this playlist. And what's great about Spotify is they don't put your playlist like in any any sort of order. Like you're not grouped <laughs> by genre or alphabetically or... So it's totally anything. randomized. Yeah, just <laughs> just completely. Okay. Um, let's put... I'm going to try to find bands that I don't think that anybody has ever heard of before. Okay. So let's track down... And this is just going to be like... All right. These are thought. Yeah, Matt Sinister, you might be into some of this. We're gonna say there's a band called American Minor, M I N O R, mm-hmm. and the song is called Buffalo Creek. Buffalo wow. Creek. Why does that sound sick. familiar? Buffalo. It Creek. sounds very familiar. I, I know the band Creek. you're talking about, but I'm, I'm trying to remember yeah. the song. Yeah, that's a good one. Okay. Um, let's try. There's a band called Bad Wizard. <laughs> See, none of this. And the song is called Sky High. Sky High. Sky High. And hmm, what other band do I think that no one has heard of before? How about, have you guys, have you got Priestess? Priestess? Priestess. I've heard of Priestess. Okay, do Priestess Two Kids. Priestess. Those are three bangers. Two bangers. Kids. Great songs. Absolutely. How about you, Matt? What do you got for us? Well, I, as I recall, I did the categories in something that's more from this century, you know, more newer, <laughs> something that's from the old school, you know, a classic rock song, yeah. mm-hmm. and then a one hit wonder. Um, so something that's newer. Um, Oh, God, because I, I don't listen to a lot of newer music that's, you know, I download the albums or anything. Um, right. But uh, let's see here. I keep wanting to go back to Shinedown, but I did Shinedown last week. Um, probably, um, God, I'm just, I'm brain farting right now. <laughs> um, let's do, uh, let's do Three Doors Down. Uh time of my life three doors down time of my life all um, right and then uh let's do uh, uh aerosmith walk this way oh, oh hell yeah come on and then for a one hit wonder let's do paul simon's call me Al. yeah call me Al. you can you can call me Al. Okay. Everyone thinks the name is of the that song is if if, if Paul he's my bodyguard. Yeah, it's Paul Simon. You know, I mean, obviously he's not a one-hit wonder with Simon and Garfunkel, but on his own, right. there was just that song. No, I don't think anyone yeah. could name another Paul Simon song. It was like it was really like that album. Like I like that album, Graceland. I think that's yeah. a great album. But I could, I, Casey could name you. I think we own multiple Paul Simon albums. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he had his fans. He had his yeah. fan base. But as far as uh, you know, uh, you call me. You can call me out. Blew that up. That was like the big largely hit. because of the video with Chevy Chase. Yep, that was like his big Paul Simon's big hit. Yeah. Okay. And, and I'm a huge fan of one hit wonders. Uh, VH1 some time ago did a top 100 one hit wonders. Uh, I think they did it like in the in the early 2000s, and I just. I can listen to One Hit Wonders all day. One Hit Wonders. I am waiting for one more suggestion from my wife first because she's got a notepad in front of her. Oh. Yeah, it takes her a minute to think about these things. She's picky about her music. I. It's not that I'm picky. It's <laughs> He went with bands that he didn't think a lot of people knew. So... I went with one band that a lot of people know in dedication of the eight minute song we spoke about earlier. You can't go longer songs than Meatloaf. Like, I don't think they had a song under six minutes, and that's part of what I loved about them. So we're going to bang out Meatloaf, two out of three ain't bad. Um, And then 
bouncing back to the songs and bands that we don't think people have heard very much of. <coughs> uh, Parachute, Kiss Me Slowly. Okay. And then the third one is Red Light Kings. I heard of them. Bullet in my hand. Like, when I need to get pumped, when I'm, like, down and I need to get myself bullet up that little bit. Bullet in my hand? Yes. Bullet in my hand. Okay. Like, that is my, I don't care how bad life gets, like, I can listen to this and, all right, all right let's get shit done. <laughs> so it's a motivator. Blowing it's a mo- right there. It is. It's a great <laughs> it song. It's one of those things I crank downstairs when I'm cleaning, and I really don't want to do the thing, but I have to do the thing because it motivates right. you to do the thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what am I gonna do? Uh, what am I gonna suggest here for songs today? Uh, I'm gonna go off of things that I've been playing recently on my turntable, and one of those, and I'm probably gonna be the the first. Uh, songs on this list it's the first track from the album but I just recently picked up The Misfits Collections 2 and I want to pick We Are 138 and that's going to follow be followed up with what else have I been listening to? oh yes um, Wu-Tang Clan ain't nothing to fuck with Wu Tang is life. Wu Tang. That's right. And then the third one, I'm gonna have to go a little older too, with my metal, and I'm gonna say, sh- did I say shortest straw last week? No. I did no. not say shortest straw. That is a great song. <laughs> that is my favorite song by them. Um, no, I did not. Told you. Okay, cool. <laughs> We've got, got that. Really, that riff, that shortest straw riff. It's one that, of the best Metallic Cat riffs. That ever. was my very first ever listen to metal record and the very first vinyl I ever heard. Um, nice. And that is by far my favorite song. Nice. So Wu Tang, the good one. Plant ain't nothing to fuck with. And shortest straw. Dope. Bangers all the way around. Yeah, dude. Dope, dope, dope. Well, we're going to have to wrap things up now, guys. We're getting close to uh, to time here. Why don't cool. uh, Matt, Pixie, thank you guys very much for being here. What's going on with you guys this week? <clears throat> Well, um, you know, you can. Uh, you know, everyone knows about the, the the getting my health back, as I've been labeling it. Yeah. Um, you know, back in the gym, training again. You know, doing this keto diet, intermittent fasting. Um, I'm documenting this whole thing. Um, you can find the videos on TikTok, Instagram, um, at Matt Sinister. Um, eventually, I'm planning on putting this whole thing together in some kind of short documentary that I'll post on my YouTube channel. Um, and then uh, that's uh, pretty much what's going on with me. I mean, I have just, I'm just so devoted to getting my health back. And every week, the training gets more intense. Yeah. And you can see that in my videos. And I'm very, very grateful. Anyone who's listening that have been following these videos, I'm very, very grateful and thankful that, of the support that I've been getting because it's really been it's really helped motivate me even more so yeah it's all awesome. at matt sinister on tiktok instagram youtube you know i have a twitter account but i, I if i go on twitter i'm just gonna get pissed off and want to powerbomb the world so <laughs> yeah. uh and then blow some serious mud afterwards yeah, yeah. <laughs> how about you pixie i <clears throat> have had a hell of a week and have a hell of a couple of weeks ahead of me one of our friends in the vape community because i play around with resin has asked me to attempt to make him an atomizer stand but he wants something that is a chaos custom and i have absolutely no idea what the hell i'm doing with the ideas that he gave me but i'm doing a lot of testing and a lot of failing and a lot of finding out what works and what doesn't in an attempt to make this thing 
Yeah. Um, so we've got, now the initial testing has been down. Now we're looking into silicone to make molds of our own to see if we can make this happen <laughs> the way I want it to. Um, <laughs> so it's been lots of fun stuff. Um, other than that, uh, still open for orders. I'm, I'm hoping to be able to add the idea of custom Addy stands to everything else I already make from mm -hmm. the rolling trays and grinders and things like that. Um, and that can be found at facebook.com backslash chaos pixie creations. Uh, other than that, it's work, work, zug, zug, and keeping up with our 14 year old. <laughs> <laughs> zug, zug. <laughs> zug, Back zug. to work. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness uh how about you nick how's uh things looking for you for your week uh man it's gonna be uh it's gonna be a i mean honestly it's kind of gonna be a pretty standard issue week for me uh my birthday's coming up on april 6th so i am taking that week off of streaming and so this is gonna be this coming week is kind of my last week right before my birthday but We've got build streams, we've got TBNs, we've got vlogs, we've got videos, we've got reviews, we've got podcasts. It's just going to be another week to power through. Actually, what I'm really looking forward to this week is, because we're having some nice weather down here in L.A., I'm going to start riding my bike again in the evenings. Cool. Hell all yeah. last summer, I loved riding my bike all over the neighborhood, like at dusk. And I haven't been doing that just because I, I run cold and it's been cold. Now that it's warm, I'm going to get on that bike and ride it around all Los Angeles. Heck yeah. So yeah, that should be fun. Uh, Nick, are you still, even though you said you're taking that week off, are you going to do the, uh, the the Instagram streams, the cool kids streams? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, definitely. Okay. All cool. the cool kids stuff is still the same. In fact, we'll probably still do a Zoom room. Like maybe we can pick two nights and do two Zoom rooms or something. Like Cool. Like just off of like, <sighs> like awesome. streaming work, not like. Yeah. Like, Fun, right, you know, right. Just gonna yeah. disappear. <laughs> right. You know. Well, we did talk about you know the day in the life, and you discussed how busy everything is. And I just want to yeah. express again how thankful we are for having you on here today. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. You're joining us is awesome, man. Thank you Absolutely. so much for taking the time my, for us. My pleasure. Thank you for having me on. Keep 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 at this. Keep doing it. Keep doing the podcast. You guys have fun with it. And We're it gonna shows, try like so. hell. Keep going, man. <laughs> We're yeah. going to try like hell. But and that's training your ass off, Matt Sinister. Absolutely. Yeah, I hope you uh, can take some time and take a look at those videos, dude, because yeah, if, oh, if yeah. it'll help, maybe it'll inspire you to, like, do some power riding on your bike. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Uphill. Uphill, Uphill both ways, riders. through five feet of snow. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> yep, while carrying, carrying two basketballs. Yeah, while carrying two basketballs. <laughs> With a negative 10 degree wind chill. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> maybe not that i mean that seems a little excessive that is something that we do not that, that has not become us that that we're a lot of our with our parents and our grandparents i do not exaggerate about yeah i got up and i got i rode my bike to school every day i didn't do it uphill both ways through five feet of snow right you right. know i had an alarm clock i didn't just wake up because of a sense of responsibility decided to wake me up in the morning you know those those okay. stories we used to get from our parents and especially our grandparents, as you get older, you start to realize they were so full of shit. Yeah, they yeah. might have been exaggerating. <laughs> <laughs> Just a wee a bit. <laughs> Just a wee bit. All righty, guys. That's going to wrap us up. Thank you all so much for tuning in to the Cloudy yeah. Days Calm Nights podcast yet again for another week. Thank you. It's been yeah. a pleasure to spend this time with everybody. And, uh, yeah, until next week, guys, you will see us later. You won't see us Peace. at all because you'll hear us. Later. You'll hear us later. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>